Hello everybody, good morning, good morning, so bechir. To all participants from Iran, Germany and the other countries in this uh, online dialogue from Nadima, this is our uh, elements event that we uh, have planned uh, during this project, which is funded by German Academic Exchange Service, the ADE, and the Federal Foreign Office Germany, the biggest amt. Uh, in a collaboration of our partners in Iran and Germany, in Germany, uh, we, in this project, collaborating with the University of Tehakol, Technische Hochschule Kol, and the uh, University of uh, Freiburg. So, uh, from Kol, my colleague, Professor Frickett, is also here. I'm not sure if his video and the audio is working properly. Um, but um, uh, these two colleagues, uh, Professor Tim Krieger from Freiburg University and Professor Bekete are um, uh, helping us to organize also these events and in this project. Uh, Dr. Fekete is also quite uh, active in the field of natural disaster management. And as far as I remember, no, he has also work uh, on the similar topics in Iran and some uh, uh, basically projects here. Um, and of course in Iran we are working with two faculties in University of Tehran, the Faculty of Social Science, Professor Alay Dini, uh, whose uh, main field of research is urban planning and uh, the issues related to uh, socio-economic aspects of urban development in Iran and uh, also the Faculty of Natural Resources, Dr. Nazari. And uh, beside the University of Tehran, we are uh, cooperating with the uh, Iranian Strong Motion Network, uh, which is the main authority with reference to uh, tracing, recording of earthquakes in Iran and uh, part of the Ministry of Housing in Iran. Um, under the COVID-19, as you uh, have followed our events, we have shifted from our traditional seasonal schools to a series of online events. Uh, this year, we focus more on uh, uh, specialized workshops uh, which are meant to um, you know, deliver the important um, methodological uh, developments and skills uh, with reference to different issues related to climate change and natural disaster management. Um, today uh, we had this opportunity uh, to invite Dr. Jamali, Tino Jamali, a uh, good colleague and friend who has done extensive study uh, on the issue of climate change, food security, and the related issues on the water uh, management, uh, and uh, to deliver this lecture. Um, to introduce Dr. Jamali uh, from his educational background. He got his PhD in the Agricultural Economics from the University of Göttingen, uh, the Faculty of Agricultural Science uh, in the year 2012 in Göttingen. Uh, he did also his master uh, study program in the socio-economics of rural development in the year 2007. Uh, he also uh, is a graduate of University of Tehran in the field of uh, agricultural economics. He got his bachelor uh, in University of Tehran, and after that, he came to Germany for doing his master and PhD. Um, up to now, uh, the main focus of Dr. Jamali's research uh, is, as I mentioned, is on the water economics, food price, uh, volatility, and food supply change and the related issues. Uh, his career and his professional uh, background, uh, the most recent one is uh, as a member, as a research associate at the Leibniz Institute of Agricultural Development and Transition Economies. Uh, so he joined this uh, institute in 2016. Um, 
and uh, as a part of his activities in this uh, institute, he has focused on the Russia and the European Union food supply chain. Um, uh, during 2012 until 2017, he also worked as a postdoc uh, fellow at the University of Göttingen um, with Varito project, but one of the projects uh, was the food price volatility and uh, uh, he was uh, active in that field. Uh, he also uh, was a consultant uh, for the World Bank and FAO uh, on a variety of projects. So it's a very uh, great pleasure for our team in the NADIMA to have Dr. Jamali today uh, on very interesting and applied topics uh, and the participants uh, basically uh, I'm pretty sure that they there would be good uh, insights on this topic today in his workshop. Uh, but given the fact that also Dr. Fekete is also here, Dr. Fekete, if you want to um, uh, briefly introduce uh, your center and uh, maybe also welcoming the participant on your side, uh, feel free to say a few words and then we give the floor to Dr. Jamali to start his workshop. Well, thank you very much. I, I'd like to introduce all the participants. I'm, I'm really glad to have another exciting webin webinar. I want to emph emphasize that the um, coding with R is very much requested in our field. So we are at the Institute of Rescue Engineering and Civil Protection, which means a lot of our people are still in, active in, uh, with the recovery of the flood that happened in Germany. So they're working for the technical relief operations, they're working for the rescue paramedics teams, and many of them are lacking basics in understanding how to utilize open source data and how to connect it to advanced forms of modeling where the usual programs and software come to an end. So it's absolutely exciting and great to see that you are having such a webinar and have such dedicated experts in Iran and it would be uh, fantastic as Nadima, I think, is designed to foster more dialogue between the two countries and even more to think about those broad uh, and very relevant topics, be it economics in relation to food volatility, to floods, to droughts or to uh, ongoing other natural hazards. So let me congratulate you for having such a really renowned form of experts. I want to apologize that many of our team members are still active in the field and cannot join today and I wish you all great success. Thank you. Thank you very much Alexander for this uh, kind words and good introduction uh, also on the topic. Uh, I wanted to also mention that we will have more uh, uh, type of online dialogues in the rest of 2000 uh, in the current year 2021 and uh, even we plan in September uh, more likely two, two events uh, uh, and when it is confirmed we will publish it soon on the website. The events in September and uh, the other months in this year. So uh, still we have uh, uh, more of these uh, online dialogues uh, in this year and uh, the project will continue next year 2022 and we hope uh, that next year the situation of uh, pandemic uh, getting uh, a bit more better so we may uh, be able to shift to our seasonal schools namely uh, going to Iran and the Iranians also come here to uh, to happen to to organize this type of events but until then we should be so um, thanks again also for participants who have joined us and uh, now I would like to uh, invite Dr. Jamali to start his workshops agenda and uh, which is planned for today, today and uh, on the 11th of, uh, 11th of uh, August, uh, the second day. Um, so I'm very much looking forward uh, to this event today. Thank you. So, thank you very much for this uh, nice introduction to me and the program. Uh, it's a pleasure to be a part of this 
a series of workshops that Professor Farzanegon has organized. Uh, and I have the pleasure to present uh, these two days, uh, an area which I interfaced like in um, the years between 2007 and 2014, and I was somehow fascinated about this area. Uh, during this presentation, every five and ten minutes, I will uh, somehow uh, ask if anybody has any question or uh, to check if we have a connectivity, internet connections, and if things that work. And I hope that we, I will have an interaction from the sides of the participants. So every five to mid ten minutes, I will ask if anybody has a question and uh, if everybody somehow has question, they can ask me. And if there is a disconnection, I hope that the uh, technical uh, colleagues, they will tell me that something is disconnected. So everything is uh, good till now. Did you hear my talk? So it seems it's good, so we start. The topic I'm going to present is somehow application of the special econometric techniques in R, which has a usages on many different fields. We will start with a short introduction and then I will, uh, not the short introduction, like relatively long introduction and then we will have introduction to spatial models and then uh, we will go to the spatial econometrics in R. Uh, plotting in R we will do a bit this session and I think we will not have time for doing that a lot this time so I leave it actually for next session mainly and there will be some exercise distribution at the end of the meeting. There will be, as I heard, there will be two, uh, uh, somehow, coffee rest and lunch break. And I hope the uh, technical team will tell me when it's good to have them. Uh, we have not organized that with, uh, with direct plan today. So there should be two breaks uh, in the six hours presentation so that's uh, for it uh, if there is no question we can go forward no question till now so so uh, dr yes. jamali if uh, uh, any of participants later on uh, have a specific questions, so there's two options. Either they write the question in the chat room, in the general chat room, and uh, my colleagues in that email will note it and they will let you okay. know uh, later on when it comes okay. to question and answering. And if uh, uh, there is the second option is that they use the audio, uh, audio function in Adobe Connect, raise their hand, uh, and uh, if it is easier for them to uh, present their question orally, and uh, that is also a possible. Okay, and about the breaks, uh, when do you think we should have a coffee break and lunch break? Well, we usually have one hour, one hour lunch break. Uh, happens between 12 to 13 or 13 to 14 in our time. So depending on, on the content and the duration of your workshop and the breaks is up to you so okay. if you see that in between there is a need for a break uh, so you we are flexible on that okay. so it's uh, you can you can and it for you thank you very much so we continue uh, after this uh, important information uh, i add that i just go to the next slide so the term a special econometrics in German is called the Römliche Ökonometrie and in Persian we say Erzatsanje Fazoi. So uh, uh, through the, the course, if somebody thinks that he needs to ask the question in both of these languages, I 
will listen and I will translate the question and I will answer it in English. So feel free if you feel hard to to answer the question in English, it can be said in German or Persian. I will answer them in English. So we go to introduction part. I will start with this special pattern and it's important. The definition of the geostatistics variables and uh, some uh, special econometric definitions. So we start from a very hot topic of the day. That's the pandemic distribution. So if you look to the indexes which are gathered for measuring the level of people become sick, on the right side we have a Robert Koch Institute in Germany, uh, 6th of August report of the new infected people by COVID-19. And we see a sort of a special pattern on uh, the somehow high infected regions and lower infected regions. So pandemic is one of the uh, issues of a special uh, variables and the index it measure it. You can see in the map on the right is that. On the map of the left is the, the latest uh, report I found from one of the Iranian uh, agencies and it shows also the, the high danger and low danger regions of being infected by the COVID. And we see also a, a special pattern in the Iranian map. So if there is a center which is more affected, we can expect that the, the neighboring uh, regions are also highly affected or relatively a bit low. So the, this is a, a somehow a sp spatial variable. The second topic of the day is now a spatial pattern of the conflict. So here we see the latest uh, map of conflict in Afghanistan and the, the regions which are uh, fought between the Taliban and the state Gulf forces and the regions which are uh, confisc uh, contested. So we can see that, we can imagine where will be the next somehow um, effect, the next place that will collapse or will be taken by the government forces. So these are the the issues of the special variables. So we have an index, we have a, a variable which gets measured based on the special units. And then we can think on the dynamics and the future. And we can think on what may happen or what has happened. So we deal with the special variables on a daily basis. So as an agricultural economist, now I look to an agricultural variable. This is on the right side is the density of the chipping uh, um, beef cattle or Rinderfleisch in the German term uh, in Germany. As we see, we have somehow a concentration on the uh, southeast and on the northwest of Germany. So in Baden, Bayern, uh, we see higher uh, somehow beef, cattle beef for beef production and on the Northwest. Again, here as the first picture of pandemic, we see a sort of a sort of a special distribution. We see it's a cluster of data. And uh, on the left side, we see the size of the meat production in Iran like in, I think, nine, 2004. So in Iran also, we see somehow the uh, provinces and the counties with higher level of the meat production. We can, we can expect that the neighboring counties, they have relatively high level of the meat production. So this is another special variable. So we go one step further. Germany, on the right side, we have a swine produ production uh, again, we see it somehow in the in the south, in the Baden-Württemberg, and the north, in the north Rhine-Westfalen, and uh, in North Saxony. And we see uh, sort of on the right side, we see for the beef cattle production, we see similar pattern, but not exactly the same. So what is the usage of this type of variables here? 
we can uh, expect where maybe there are some pollutions to groundwater. Yeah, so if we have a, a, a suspicion that the, the manure left from the rain on beef, cattle and the swine, they are like uh, affected the groundwater resources, we may uh, spend the money on those regions to test the, the quality of the aquifers, the groundwater resources. So you see, uh, uh, the spatial patterns can help us to somehow direct our budget. If the budgets are limited, we will know where to go and what to test. So the next thing is one of the areas which I really like, and that's the, the groundwater uh, issue. So here on the left side, we have the aquifers all over Iran which they are like 609, as I remember. And the red ones are the red zones and the yellow ones are the forbidden zones. So in 2019. So red zone means, uh, yellow zone means you don't allow uh, to dig more wells. And red zones means somehow some rehabilitation should be done because the groundwater resources are, are very down and the wells are very deep. So on the right side, we see the land subsidence. So we see a sort of relation between the land subsidence and the red pieces uh, Red pieces, you see, these red pieces are land subsidence. So it means the, the land is just collapsed or go down. So if you consider the groundwater, if you consider the land, it just go down. Uh, and uh, one of the main reasons for that is the extract so over exploitation of the groundwater resources so we can see on two different uh, spatial variables here we can see we expect that uh, those regions which are red zone probably will see or will end it up to the land subsidence so we have an a, a, a issue uh, arising by uh, Dr. Fackett that uh, the issue of pollution in the groundwater resources is an issue in Germany. And uh, <coughs> the COVID has affected uh, the companies who will fail to keep the standards. Yes, interesting. Yeah, so these are all uh, some examples of the of the special variables, and uh, what you see in this last one is an issue of the causal effect. So if one special variable affects the other one, and how much? This is what uh, we somehow study in these special statistics. So. Uh, If we go to the issue of the importance. So the special uh, uh, pattern is an issue in the statistical observations. And it can be, as you have seen, due to the pandemic, due to the Black Death in the 14th century. If you look to old, pa old, old uh, maps of that year, you will see that things were also expanded spatially. And it is an issue of the geospatial variables. So geospatial climatical rainfall, temperature, groundwater, geodesy, they are all geospatial variables. So geo, geographical and geological and hydrogeological. So when you say geostatistics, I mean you are dealing with anything that in this category. And it is an issue in the socio and economic, uh, uh, socio economic uh, issues. We have a spillover effect, a spillover effect on the economic and social variables, facts. You have, we have seen uh, some of them, the conflict regions uh, or the, the meat production. So it's important to account for these issues. So 
it helps us to understand the pattern. It helps us to interpolate between the observations on the spatial basis, and it helps us to find the causality. So causality is the focus actually on this lecture. So the spatial data analysis can be categorized to spatial statistics, which is what is called at the beginning when it appeared in the 60s. So when you analyze the spatial data to find the patterns. But then it just somehow goes to geostatistic and spatial econometrics. So I have to confess that spatial econometrics is not mainly developed by, by economists or econometricians, but by the geographies or, or geostatisticians. So this is something we have to confess. So, what are the differences? So, geostatistical data are data that could, in principle, be measured anywhere, but that typically uh, come as a measurement at a limited number of observation locations. Geostatistical data, for example, with these things, the estimation of ore grade over mineable units based on drill hole data. So, you dig and you find some ore and you check the quality, the, the, the level of ore in the stones you found and then you decide how you continue with your mines. So interpolation of the environmental variables from sample or monitoring networks data, air quality, uh, soil pollution, groundwater head, hydraulic con conductivity and so on and so on. So all these variables are dealt with in the geostatistics. Interpretation of the physical or chemical variables from sample data. For example, imagine a pollution is expanded in a river. Yeah. So how we can estimate this uh, dynamics? That's a geostatistic. We take some samples in the river and we make a plan. We will see in the next slide how it's worked. And the estimation of the spatial averages from continuous spatially correlated data. So, geostatistics, which is not the topic of our discussion, works with some tools like variogram, interpolation, creings, co creings filtering, smoothings, and many other other things. I just give uh, one example today for us to have a picture in mind what geostatistics deal with. So, this is a paper I found uh, done on. Um, caution aquifer, so caution groundwater uh, resources. So the people in this study, they have applied the geostatistic to somehow define the, the water table and some other hydrogeological variables uh, under the ground. So you have observatory wells, you gather the data from there regularly, and then with the creings, these guys, they have tried to somehow model the underground water table. So on the left panel, we have the data gathered from the observatory wells, which in Iran under the control of the Iran Water Resources Management Organization. They somehow gathered the data on the level of water tables regularly. It is done normally by each regional uh, water authority. Then they have used the creating, which is sort of interpretation approach, and they come up with the map on the right side. So there they have estimated the depth of the water. And you see, the go more you go to the southwest, you see a deeper. So more to the northeast or to the to the east, you have a higher level of the water table. And if you if you go back to the former picture, we see somehow it is near to a, a, a salty lake. So in this paper, there are some other variables done on the quality and saltiness of the water. So here you see. 
uh, usages of the uh, the Krieging in the geostatistic. And if you look to your daily life, you see many, 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 many of these examples that some data are gathered, interpolation dot, and such a map is made. And that is not the topic of, of our research because we are not dealing with this issue. So, geostatistic we deal with the characterization of the formation or development of the neighboring relations, as you saw. So, we just want to the pattern, we some, somehow want to find some values in the neighborhoods. You can study more about the special analysis online, there, this website you have more information on, on this issue. So, in the special econometric, we will characterize to what extent a spatial or relational proximity influences an outcome of a, a relation by controlling multiple characteristics. Yeah, so this is the difference. In the geostatistic, we want to find a pattern, we want to some values in the, in the places that we don't have. In the spatial econometrics, we first want to be sure that or causal uh, uh, analysis is correct and then we want to somehow correct it and we do also some sort of uh, 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 prediction but our prediction uh, is not as the way that the geostatistics deal with the prediction so special econometrics back to the uh, definition defined by one of its major founding fathers is a collection of techniques that deal with the peculiarities caused by space in the statistical analysis of regional science model. And it was first used by the Belgian economists uh, uh, Pjelinik and Clausen, 1979, but somehow uh, out of the view of the economists for a long time and in the 90s, it came back to be an issue and it grows and grows and uh, is a, somehow an ecosystem of things which are added and developing since then. And this guy, Luke Anselin, is one of the important person in the developing of the special econometrics. So, to summarizing what is the special econometrics, we can say special econometrics modeling is a process help us to deal with empirical issues. This is a very wide area which can be summarized with the following attributes. It is an estimation theory. So we estimate here. It consists of a theoretical models based on the theory of economics, most of them consisting of the selection of variables, but also determining the form of the model. So, you see, the economic theory is an issue. Here we cannot, in the special economic, put every apple and orange into a regression, into analysis. We should be very careful about what we put for an analysis. So, we should be in line in the economic theory. It is a technical way of carrying out the estimation together with the assessment of the fit and the quality of the estimated model, the selection of the best model, and the implementation of the forecast and the new data. So you see, we want to have a best model and we want to have a best prediction. If we have a special variable and we neglect the issue of that, we don't have both of this. We don't have a good estimation. We don't have a, a good prediction. It is an interpretation of the model on one hand consisting of examining the size and significance of the obtained econometric model coefficients, but on the other hand, translating quantitative results into phenomena and mechanism discussed in the theory. So after we have it, we have to interpret it. So there are many cases that we will discuss during this workshop that is really a headache for economists to deal with the significant spatial variables. They are not in line in theory many times. They are uh, there are problems in somehow understanding the, the relation. But we need to do that because we have that pattern in the data. So when we are doing empirical model, we have to be careful about it. 
so we can go to the next slide so now we will start with the major issues the issues that we are going to deal with here are the regression so we understand that we are dealing with sort of regression sort of estimation and we understand that we have some uh, pattern in the data that we have to deal with so we want to see where we uh, somehow go away from the basic model and we start with the basic model and then we will go to a special weight matrix we just define what is that and then uh, we will go through the Moran eye test we will discuss the special regression and then we will have a view on the coordinates and UTM any question no question so i just test with the technical part to see if things work yes professor farzanagan said utm what is utm it will come at the end of the part two no worry we will discuss that later So, imagine we have an OLS regression. So, uh, Y as a function of some regressors, X, a coefficient, beta, and a residual. A classical, simple OLS model. A cross-sectional setting. So, Some staff didn't appear, it's like strange. Yeah, so here we have uh, N observation, M regressors, M coefficients, uh, according to the number of uh, regressors we have, and we have the residuals. The basic things we dealt with so is, the, is like that. So we have at this part, which we are, I am noting to, we have y as a function of the vector of the regressors plus a residual. Residual has a normal distribution. They mean zero. They have a constant variance. Identically, independently distributed residuals. So residuals and residuals that we have here they are identically independently distributed. So when we have identically independently distributed residuals, we can say residual is equal to the dependent variable minus its prediction, which is prediction is like this part. So vector of regressors multiplied to the coefficients, it gives us the predicted values. And then we will somehow estimate the variance and the lower variance that we have the lower lower variance that we have we have the minimum of the error and through that we can estimate the coefficients there so coefficients there is estimated as in the matrix algebra to say transpose of the regressors multiplied to the dependent variable vector multiplied to the inverse of the transpose of the regressors multiplied in a matrix algebra multiplied to the regressors but this has one major assumption identically independently distributed what is wrong here when we have a special relations in our observations can somebody say what is the problem if we have observations or especially autocorrelated. Somebody is writing.
let's see if somebody can ask answer this question yes they are not independent errors are related so when errors are independent and errors, all what they have discussed is become a bullshit the beta is doesn't really show a right magnitudes of of the of the causal effect and then the predictions are bullshit are not consistent because of this a special assumption is violated yeah exactly that in chat is written we have errors related errors all in Persian and in English is written everybody is correct yeah so it means that we have a sick regression and we have to cure we have to white nose no no somebody wrote white nose if white nose is for time series yeah so be careful we are not in the in the time series area we are in the special correlation white nose is different issue so forget about the random walk forget about the uh, non-stationarity no we are discussing another issue here so a minute leave the time series out of your mind so we think we are in the special special in in the in the cross-sectional data no no time series yeah so thank you so <clears throat> what we will do we have to deal with it so if a special autocorrelation is available in the error term then the assumption of independence is violated the variance covariance matrix has a problem they cannot estimate our nice uh, variance of the residuals then to estimate our coefficients the coefficients are not consistent and the prediction of the model is not reliable so what we have to do we have to do a spatial test on what on the residuals so how we should do that we need to do some somehow preliminaries and that's it we have to establish a weight matrix so what is the weight matrix the major difference between a special econometrics and a standard econometrics lies on two different type of information needed observation value of economic or non-economic variables yeah and the particular location where the data observed yeah so where the data observed is an issue which is in the normal OLS is not an issue everything is identically independently nicely distributed and no discussion on the location here is not we say where something happens is an issue and it can affect somebody who is near to it so we need a special map we need to know where are the data are landing and closeness in this issue the more you close something the more you're affected or the far away you are from something you may not be affected so it is an issue we need to deal with the closeness the special matrix so we start with the cross-board example i hope everybody knew chess so chess used to be a very popular sport in iran in 90s so those times there was no computer no internet nothing and we used to in iran to play chess like every day two three times i think professor farzanagan is also from that generation of chess players so why chess playing is an issue or interesting issue look to the crossboard so in chess you have a different type of uh, actors yeah and each actor can affect a certain area so pivots they move uh, 
one step forward to all sides, then rook or queen, they move differently. Horses differently. So we can imagine a, a crossbow, a, a crossboard situation, and we can say that each point is somehow affected depending on where is the actors on the on the battlefield, on the chess battlefield. So chess can give us an idea on the weights. Yeah, so if you are a pivot or you are uh, from the, the black side, yeah, you consider the, the danger of, of each guy and you, and you can imagine how you are affected by their weight, the danger, or on your side, who stops you. So chess is, is, is one of the irregular cases for economists. So if economists want to map the chess, he has a really headache because each actor somehow acts differently. And it is actually sometimes the case. So you have maybe in economics cases that the specially distributed actors, they affect other actors completely in asymmetric ways. Not a symmetric ways, asymmetric ways. And it is something that you may model, difficult, but you could. And we will not do that here. We will do more a sort of symmetric type of uh, weight matrix. So if everybody happy with the beginning with the chess crossboard, I want to go to the next. Yeah. So. Different colors here, yeah, white, gray, and black, shows somehow different values of a variable under study, ranging from low values, white, to high values, black. On the left side, we have a special autocorrelation. It means that somehow we can see a pattern of a specially distributed uh, variables. So, the neighborhood of the white is somehow white and green and the neighborhood of the black are somehow a dark dark gray or gray. This is an example of the special uh, autocorrelation structure. So if we have observation on each of the uh, uh, scores here, each of the scores, we have an observation. Then those more or less affecting the neighbors. So we can expect in the white area, we have a white or low values around it, and on the black one, we have the black one around it. On the right side, yeah, we have two pattern. Half of the crossboard is a special heterogeneity, and half of it is a special uh, autocorrelation. So on the left side, so on the, if you go to the right crossboard, it divided to two. On the left side, we have a special heterogeneity, and on the right side, we have a special autocorrelation. Yeah? So if we have a special heterogeneity, we are like somehow free of the problem. There is no problem. We don't need to be worried about the special problems. And the specially distributed variables are not affecting each other. So I, I just go again on it. So if we go here, then let me see if I can do some. So here, special heterogeneity, and here, a special autocorrelation. So this one, uh, this one is somehow the same as this one. So they are the same, the structure. Why, why so focusing on that? Because I think a spatial matrix is the most important issue in the, in the spatial econometrics. And I have to confess that it is a subjective issue. Because it is I 
who deal with the issue to understand who is the neighbor of what. And this is not an objective issue. It is not something that I come with the with Einstein equation energy equal to mc2 come and find it no i have to sit and think and come up with some an idea an idea that who is affecting who and how so we need to be very careful i think from my point of view the weight matrix is the core of the spatial econometric So, now we go back again to a chess uh, structure. I somehow get rid of this. Yes. Here we have a rook criterion to define the neighborhood. Let's see. So, rook, uh, yeah, rook criterion. So, rook moves like directly to, to sides. So, it can go only to the uh, slots that they have a full border to the first point yeah but then queen it can move in all direction yeah if it has a piece of connection to the point that we define the slot that we define so defining weight matrix is as crazy as this so you have to sit and decide who is neighbor to what and how one observation affects the other observation. And that is good to maybe play chess. So there is a question. Is there any test clearly indicate that the problem is related to the spatial heterogeneity or normal heterogeneity? No. No, definitely not. And we are dealing with that today. So we will see what is that test. We will see how crazy is the defining the test. Thanks for the question. There is no something um, piece of cake. A test of heteroscedasticity. No. You have to first define the weight matrix. That's why I'm telling you the weight matrix is very important. And we will see how the test will be developed later out of the weight matrix. So any question of on on chess uh, uh, somehow lecture till now no question on the chess yeah hopefully one time i and for so far i will sit and play a chess with the idea of a special special weight matrix so a special weight matrix so we have a vector of n observation if you remember from the OLS uh, model in reality the map should be defined not based on the cross board of the chess but based on the administrative units of political borders and uh, further definitions needed so to start we can say the heart of the special econometric is weight matrix or the connectivity matrix so we make it simple here we say if we are in connection one and we are disconnected zero and i am not connected to myself so When I define the weight matrix, I think like that. So, W11 means observation 1 affecting itself. And WN1 means observation N affecting observation 1. Or W1N means observation 1 affecting what's. So, this shows the, the, this is a cross, somehow cross matrix. Yeah? Defined based on 1 and 0. Of the connectivity but what is connected with what we will discuss the this issue and i will just want to show you how subjective is this issue so imagine n r shows the the neighbors yeah neighbors for example i am now in 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 Halle in east germany i'm not connected to the marburg in the center to center to west germany 
Yeah. But I am near to Leipzig. I am near to Magdeburg. I'm near to, to Gön uh, Hannover. So Hannover, Magdeburg, Leipzig, they affect Halle more than Marburg. But then Frankfurt affect Marburg. So based on that, we can define a sort of weight matrix. If we somehow analyzing some data on the Halle, Leipzig, Marburg, uh, Hannover, Frankfurt, then we will say who is who and who is one, who is zero. Uh, I have used, because I found it very, very good to explain, I have used the Ariba 2014 for this chair. So, there are three major ways to define uh, the neighbors. So, neighbors of one observation. Adjacency between two territorial units. We have discussed the root criterion and quintet criterion with one of the two ways that we define for that. Maximum distance. We say, for example, up to the 18 kilometer, up to 20 kilometers, things are affecting each other. After that, no. So, observations, for example, 100, 200 kilometers from another observation, they affect it. And then we define a sort of weight for that. And then Conyers point, we say four points which are near, five points which are near, the nearest points. Yeah. So you can imagine from this discussion how crazy that could be. Maybe a place has hundred villages around it. A place had one village around it. Those villages near to this one village could be in the in the far away distance from it. And one village could be beside it. So from a somehow intellectual point of view, you have really to sit and think who is affecting how much what. And even there are irregular ways. So I can sit and really subjectively say, okay, I think Leipzig is affected only by two places and Marburg uh, affected by 100 places. And I give a weight differently as I like. That's you can say. If you have an argument for that, you can say that. So we will give now an imaginary uh, idea imaginarily weight matrix uh, for eight observations to see how this issue works. So on the left panel you see eight regions are uh, expanded on the oh uh, somebody said Miss uh, Mescarani said that we consider the gravity model a distance. Yeah. You don't weight it in this way. You know, the gravity model, you use only distance and um, you don't think that more. So distance is a way of actually spatially weighting things. Yeah. But it's very limited in, in its application. Its application, uh, its application is, uh, is for trade. And then there are hundred things appear there. For example, uh, imagine, imagine uh, United States is exporting soybean to China. Is this done from the East Coast or from West Coast? Yeah. So which part you go and to put your distance. So distance in gravity is an issue that uh, the trade economies are somehow discussing and they are looking sometimes after the, the real transport costs. Transport costs back to the, the way that ships are just going. Uh, so I think because in the, in, the, in the trade, we are dealing with the countries at that size. And then we have like harbors and we have big things of China and, and uh, a special econometrics will not be very helpful. 
what is helpful maybe is that the the roots of the tree so how much time will take a ships come from one point to the other point a special uh, econometrics deal more with the regional things and i have not seen that is applied in the gravity model you may want they can but i think it will know this distance or the transport costs are the only factors that's used there in the gravity model so come back to the adjacency of for neighborhoods we have eight region on the cross or, or chest crossword not, not a full chest a, a, a partial chest one two three four five six seven and then i will say okay zero if you see on the diameter of this matrix is saying I, I just omit the idea that uh, number one region number one affects region number one it's just I don't eliminate this part this is not my issue yeah what I think is if the other points none of them is affecting and then I think okay I think two three four and five are neighbors to one yeah I somehow go to, in a way of the three uh, uh, three slots and then I'll decide who is who so I it's five neighbors I defined for the one and then for the two I define okay one is there and then three is there yeah is beside that four is there then no no more no, the rest I don't think they are neighbors of the two. Yeah. So in this case, it's, it's a sort of is a sort of subjectivity. I come and sit and decide who is affecting number two, and then uh, just l maybe go a bit uh, in this way. So uh, let me activate my box. So I will say number two, three, four, five. The are neighbors to one six seven eight nine they are not and then and then I move to here yeah and then I move to the second one here I will say okay one three and four are neighbors of the two but five, six, seven, nine. And then for three, I will say, okay, definitely. I think everybody is its neighbor. Yeah, well, I like it. I like the, I, li I like this way. I just, I think this is like that. Yeah. Number four, I think that one, two, three. Yes. Five, six, seven, no. Number five. I think one yes, three yes, yeah, that's I decide who, who cannot stop me. I, th I think it's like that. So I have a sort of a sort of a subjective decision at this issue here, and I have made a sort of neighborhood selection. So imagine this is your sample, this is eight samples you have, and then you say, what is the criterion for neighboring here? I said, I like it. I like it. I like to be like that. I think it is like this. What can, what can you do? I have some, some reasons to think like that. I have some reason to think number three effect number eight and number six effect number eight and number seven effect number eight. Yeah? Say it from my stomach. Now, I will go to a different criteria, nearest point for the neighborhood. So I think in this case, on two slots, two slots is my neighbor. Two is the neighbor of one. That's it. And then one is the neighbor of two. So we go again. One, two is the neighbor of one. And four, is the neighbor of two yeah and i think here i have missed the one so sorry 
uh, it should be the one should be there so for three i think two and four are the neighbors yeah by two slots i said by two slots for four i think two and three are the slots which are neighbor for five which is here five is there yeah five is there here five is there i will say for five uh, we have uh, six is the slot neighbor for six we have one and two for six is here we say five and seven and for seven we say six and eight we don't see any name so to imagine how different was it here i just like to think that eight is a neighbor of three six and seven this one was that so it could be you know imagine go back to the chess issue go back to the chess issue go back to the chess issue rook actions and pivot actions it's completely different so you can define if it is necessary if you have the argument you can define the wet matrix as you wish So we go to the D less than two, D less than two. So now I just define that for one is another question. As I said, it's a subjective issue. Again, the, another question, how preferences in choosing the neighboring neighborhood can be a dependable uh, criterion? It's difficult. It's difficult so you need really to sit uh, and think but it is an issue it is a difficult issue it is an issue so you can have an issue so that's why i just come up and spend your your precious time to just explain different examples how i define the neighbors yeah i cannot answer that the how preferences in choosing the neighborhood can be dependable criterion it is a criterion, but it's not a, like a piece of cake. Oh, that's it. That's it. No. No. That's not it. So you have to sit and think what's what. Let's make it more attractive. So we go to the part C. So less than two. So we say here, okay, less than two, one, two, one, two. Somehow two and four are the neighbors of the... Uh, here ah here so i will say two and four are neighbors of one and then when two is the neighbor of one so one is neighbor of two yeah but then two has three also as the neighbor three and four are the neighbor of two no more. So here I was on, the, on the distance of two slots. So distance. So I work somehow on the distance. So uh, how is distance defined? Here I will say one, two, one, two. So like here, like here, one, two, one, two. That's it. So I like I like the distance of twenty kilometer. I, I think twenty kilometers is, is effective. There are some uh, a bit of objective reasons how to select it. We will look it to the, those staff in the in the econometric R part or the practical part of this lecture. So three affected by two and four. Four is affected by one, two, and three. Yeah. So here you see when we work with the distance, we somehow uh, when we work on the distance, we somehow uh, we have a, a, a let me check here, here. Okay, when we work on the distance, it's like a, a more 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 visualizing acceptable or, but it's not the reality as I said. You know, anytime you think uh, that, uh, anytime you think that. Uh, things should be so clear remember the chess the chess is not something clear so each actor has different weights on different things so sometimes it's necessary to have such an irregular asymmetric weight matrix 
as we have seen in the first case, but it's difficult to be implemented. So we, we keep, keep on going on what, what, what is here. So five, as, is, as you see, is only with six and seven, and then six is with five and seven, and seven is affected with four, six, uh, and five, and then eight has only two distance on seven. So, that's it. Let me see if there is any questions. So, any questions up to this uh, imaginary way of weighting a matrix of the, of the neighborhood? Who is the neighbor to who? We are not still in the weight matrix. We are in the neighborhood matrix. If there is no question on this, uh, yeah, uh, just here I put three different matrices side by side. You can see how beautiful is my subjectivity on the subjectivity on the way on the neighborhood. One time I just decided from my stomach that a genesis is an issue. The second one is based on the two nearest point and third one is based on the distance. And the two, the second and third one is what actually we will work on it in this course and actually what the economist, econometricians are mainly work with. But there are cases that you really ended up to the first case that you, you have a, a, an issue of subjective selection of the neighborhood. And even waiting, we will go to the waiting in next step. Somebody is writing a question. Uh, let me see what's the question. I drink a, a tea a bit. Yes, the matrix is symmetric, but for itself. For example, if two affect one, so one affect two. Yeah. This, in this sense, the matrix is selection, but it doesn't mean that we have a somehow a, a symmetric matrix fully. Yeah. It is a symmetric matrix, actually. So two sides can be different. You can, you can check, then you look to the, to the what I have made here. So, the first one is that it can also be it 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 is actually it is actually be decided yeah so in the first case we have the cases that it is not a symmetric but in the the second and third case normally it ended up to be the upper side of the over the diameter and the downside are. Uh, or symmetric. Yeah, I, I just uh, I, I just mix it up one min uh, one minute. You are right. This is a, a symmetric. It is a symmetric matrix in the second and third cases. It could be in the first case again. You can decide again if if one affect two, maybe two will not affect one. Uh, the subjectivity in the first case is is higher, but in the second and third case we have a symmetric, a fully asymmetric, a symmetric symmetric matrix yeah thank you thank you for the question okay so now we move to the weight matrix as you saw we just put one by one so we said if you are neighbor or you're not neighbor but now we want to give a weight normally it is like that on the one row yeah we have one row we say the, the sum of the weights should be one. So the whole points which have a weight on, for example, observation one. Yeah, we go back once here. I just show it like this. We will say the whole. Uh, uh, uh. So everything here, the sum of their weights should be one. So each one is 0 0.333 weight over observation one. So some will be one. This is a standard we use 
for weight nitrogen. It could be it could be not that, but this is the standard that we use. So we say we weight it on the rows. So the sum of the rows finally will be one in this way. So it is like a standardized weight matrix. And then from a standardized weight, weight matrix, we multiply it to the variable of interest. Yeah. For example, y, y, uh, dependent variable, independent variable, any variable. We multiply it, the weight matrix which define the symmetric or asymmetric weight matrix multiplied in a, in a matrix algebra to a vector of variable. We will have a one vector of variable which shows the effect of the other variables on the certain variable. So uh, you can see now the importance how uh, weight matrix is here. So we go again to the last line. So for each observation, each observation, the weight matrix in the row multiplied to that uh, uh, observation, yeah, give us the, the, this, the lagged, reg, especially lagged valley, especially lagged valley, yeah, so it's just, so especially, it's, yeah, yeah, especially lagged value, here, look, especially lagged value is the multiplication of the weight matrix to the variable of interest, without considering the variable itself. Go back to the matrix again. Look, the variable itself is not affecting itself. So we put a zero for that. So, don't ask any question because we will now show, we will go through an, a, a, a bit more uh, or let's let's see if there is any question. Let's see if there is any question here. Oh, then second question from Professor Farzan. Oh, I'm just frightened. Let's see. Hope, hopefully, not a hard question. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking if there's any example uh, which shows how these weights in some uh, maybe you you show it in the next slide but I guess yes yes to see how these weights are constructed in the with the data yes this is a next slide will come in. okay good so but I guess it, the formula is more or less clear at least to me. yes so uh, as you saw there are like many because it, we are not a very a straightforward issue here. The black from the questions in chat, you see, I think it was like a shocking how I am playing with the, with defining the neighborhood. And uh, now we will go to see a, a more a, a real world example. Hopefully things will be more clear. I have selected the United Kingdom, not one. Not one, not two, not three is the way uh, European Union defined the regions of the European Union. So <clears throat> not one for United Kingdom defined for based on the 12 regions. Uh, and then one of these regions is North Ireland. So North Ireland has no neighborhood to the main island, to the main island of the of Britannia. And we want to go, to go to make a special weight matrix for it. So we are going to define who is neighbor of who based on the border share. And we will see what is the problem appears in this case. 12 regions start with the Scotland, North Ireland, Wales, North of England, North Wales, North West England, Yorkshire, Yorkshire and Humber, uh, West uh, Midlands, East Midlands, East Anglia, South Wales, in, uh, Southwest England, Southeast England, and Gro Great London. Twelve regions defined. The weight matrix is defined based on the neighborhood. If we go to, to the picture, we just see if two sharing a border. Yeah, here. If two are sharing a border, then they are, uh, yeah. So if 
London, which here, London share a border with somewhere, then it is, those are the neighbor, yeah? So nearest point. Here, especially defined based on the agency, agency uh, contiguity. Contiguity is the, the, the criteria for selection of the neighbors, yeah? So, a Scotland, in this case, we will see a Scotland, we will not consider it as a neighbor to itself, yeah? But we will see a north of England is the only part which is its neighbor. And then we go to North Ireland here, in second case, North Ireland has nobody as a neighbor. Normally, in the way that we define the basics of econometrics, we look to the global neighborhood. Yeah? We are escaping the idea of the islands. Islands means somebody who is separated from the rest of the sample. So the neighborhood, there is an objectivity here, so a criteria. We escape in the global analysis of a of the of the regional data, we escape the local relation. We go for the global relation. So yes. So Ireland has no relation, North Ireland no relation to anyone. And then here, I just take it away. And then here Wales, we will see it has a, a neighborhood with Northwest England, West Midland, and the Southwest England. So three regions. So we can go this uh, uh, table to down, and we will, by looking to the map I presented before, we can say who is who, who is who. With the problem is, is, is Ireland. Ireland has no neighbor. So subjectively, we define as Scotland as its neighbor, the most near point to the Ireland, North Ireland. Yeah, so I define one, so I put a one there, one there, and then I go to establish the weight matrix. Remember, remember now North Ireland and the North of England are two neighbors, two neighbors of the Scotland. So I will say they weight is half, 50%. Scotland affects North Ireland and there is no other neighbors. Yeah, let me see if I have. Yeah, so at the end, you see the sum of the weight. So from the defining the neighborhood in the former slide, I move now to define the weights. And I define an equal weights in this case. I will say all points on the neighborhood are affecting similarly, equally, homogeneously. Uh, each observation of interest. So Wales affects as same Northwest England, same effect Wales as same as West Midlands and the Southwest England. The sum of the weights is one. The same is for North East, North of England has two neighbors defined in the last slide, Northwest England and the Yorkshire of Humber and its effect 50%. Yeah, so 50%. So the weight matrix here is somehow, based on the observations affecting another observation, defined, um, uh, how to say, homogeneously, which is definitely not the case in many cases, but this is, those are subjective issues that we have to assume. And here we don't have a symmetric matrix anymore. If you look to that, the weight matrix is not symmetric. The neighborhood matrix was symmetric, but the weight matrix is not symmetric. So everybody happy with what I have presented now? Or still there are some issues of... So I have defined the neighborhood based on the border share between regions. And then I defined those things as a as a neighbor, and then I put the similar weight on all observations affecting certain observations. Just forget about these ones at the end. 
forget about these ones at the end I put check it out what left is look like a matrix so imagine I have multiplied this matrix this matrix I just define the matrix exactly as it is so I def this is the matrix yeah so this is the matrix here I make it the, the line a bit uh, it seems that I can can I put a color yes and the the Yes, so here, this is a matrix, yeah? I, if I multiply this matrix, yeah, to a variable of interest, which is the labor productivity in the next slide, here, the labor productivity in those regions, I, I put that matrix of the last slide here, multiplied it, so imagine this is a, this is a, this is a weight matrix here. I just, uh, here, here, the, the weight matrix, Yeah, so this imagine this is a weight matrix. Yeah, the, this is a weight matrix here, and uh, I multiply it in a matrix algebra to the labor productivity. What I will have will be the variable of interest here, the lag regressors, especially the lag uh, uh, variable. So, lag here is not in a term of the time series. Lag here is in term, term of, uh, term of speciality. So, lag here, don't mix up when you say lag one, lag two, lag three in the time series. No, this is not that lag, but a similar thing, because you consider the other observations affecting one observation. So, the weight matrix multiplied to the Y variable here, the labor productivity, in UK, give us a specially rag regressor. So, do you have me and uh, my picture and voice? Yes, uh, Tinush, we have you and your voice clearly. Um, cool. I think that was a question regarding this table in this slide. Uh, yes. Page, uh, slide 34. So, maybe... Uh, if you clarify what is the second, the third column, and uh, how we should read it. Okay, so the problem is, unfortunately, I nicely I put, I put uh, this uh, this matrix in a matrix algebra style, and then I multiply it to the next variable, which was this y, and that slide somehow lost. I don't know for any strange reason. Uh, it seems some, uh, somehow unseen I have uh, deleted it. But the point is, maybe we go a bit back to the weight matrix. So this adjusted weight matrix, if you see, yeah, this adjusted weight matrix is here. This is what we have extracted in this part so this is i make a, a rectangle around yes so this is it so this is the the matrix which is called it the, the spatial weight matrix and then i multiply it with a vector a vector of a, a, a labor productivity in uk yeah so this one so i multiply the matrix of the last slide to the vector of the labor productivity at each not one so means the regionals regions of the united kingdom and what i receive as a final uh, matrix here is especially lagged variable labor productivity it means that if the weighted effect of the labor productivity in their for example the regions uh, neighboring to london affect the labor productivity in london it shows that if we have a sort of a spillover effect and what is the weight of that 
at aggregated weight of all uh, neighboring regions on the same variable. And this is the key to whole special econometrics. So in the special econometrics, the main thing which we should establish is a weight matrix. And the second thing is what is then developed with that. Means what has been multiplied to this weight matrix and what type of vectors we produce. The vectors which are produced are called the specially weight, especially lagged variable. And they are showing the effect of the neighboring regions on the same observation. So, uh, I have a in question. here, yes. For North Island, uh, the, the weighted, the weighted uh, things, the weighted labor productivity has reduced. Is there an explanation? Yes. For that? If you remember, we had only Scotland affecting that region. You see, Scotland is the only region I put one here instead of these two zeros of the green. And then I said that Scotland is the only region affecting the North Ireland. Therefore, in the, in the next slide, you see the especially lag, lag variable of North Ireland is the value of the Scotland. Yeah. So imagine we pick up this. Imagine we pick up this. Uh, this. Uh, let me let me delete this one. So imagine we. Uh, imagine we we pick this vector, and we go to a slide before, to slide before, and we multiply it to. To this matrix. So we put that vector from that that uh, uh, page here. I will multiply to this. Then we will see the value of Scotland is the only neighboring value appears for North Island. Clear? Good. Okay, that's it. So that's it. Uh, that, that's why I selected this example because it's clearly say who is affecting wood and what are the values appeared in the special Latin lag variable. So, we have now to do the special test on what? On the residuals. With whom? With the weight matrix. So, we got the weight matrix first, as you've seen, and now we use that weight matrix to test the residuals. Imagine, again, the OLS we have presented for some minutes, that we have the predicted value minus the observed value of dependent variables. And now, just imaginary think that this U is that label productivity. So now multiply the weight matrix to the vector of residuals, we will have especially lag with residuals. And then we will work on it to see if there is a correlation between especially lag residuals and the residuals. Yeah? So, this is very important here. The vector that we are working on here is this. This is our vector of interest, this one. Yeah? This is a vector, one vector. It will be multiplied to weight matrix, and then we will see what comes out. Next slide. So, Moron I test is the special, the test of the, the major special. Uh, test. So with the Moron I test, we test if two variables are especially autocorrelate. It's first uh, uh, suggested by, by Moron in 1950. And in order, order to understand it, uh, we have to think about, Professor uh, do you have some noise from my side? No. Okay, so no noise here. So, Imagine we have two variables. We want to test two variables to see if they are correlated. We want to estimate the, the correlation coefficient, simple correlation coefficient. We have variable X and variable Y with N observation. In the normal correlation test, we say variance co so covariance over the variance of the two. 
It will be the correlation coefficient. Very simple. When we come to the return to the question from Miss uh, uh, Miss Garani, yeah. So imagine we have a vector of time series from times one to time n. So we want to test the uh, uh, autocorrelation in the observation in a time series sense. Yeah. What will we do? We make the first lag. So the first lag here, for example, the xt1, tx2. So there are two different uh, vectors with one observation just uh, uh, skipped. And then we will have the averages. And then we estimate the autocorrelation coefficient for the time series. That's it. This here we say lag. Back to the same analogy, we call the same thing in a special uh, uh, data, a special lag. Yeah? The analogy followed, but they are not the same thing. So here we have two vectors. One is time, and then we lag one, and then we estimate, for example, here for the lag one. So it can be lag two, lag three, lag four. Back to the way that we test the serial serial correlation in the time series. Um, here in the special, special of the correlation, we see if the effect of the neighboring neighboring points is somehow correlated with the certain observation. So keeping the keeping the time series autocorrelation with one lag in mind, we go to the special autocorrelation. So here we have uh, I just activate this sign. Okay. It's like, okay. So here, look, imagine a vector of variable Z. Z, 1 to N, especially distributed uh, something. It, groundwater, mid production, anything. Then we have once the weight matrix multiplied to that same variable and what time the same variable? Yeah? So, if you remember how it worked for the UK, it works here also. So, the especially, especially lagged variable and the variable itself. So, these and these, they are actually the same thing. But, these two. But when the weight is involved in one of them, yeah? We eliminate the effect of one observation on itself and we take the effect of the other neighboring observation on that point. In the denominator, we have the variance, yeah? And then here we have the weight matrix again. This is the way that the modern I test define for any variable. In the case, because when we're dealing with the residuals, the residuals, uh, the, the mean value is zero. The variance is fixed. Yeah, back to the definition. Then when we put our residuals in a matrix algebra, so a transpose vector of residuals multiplied to the especially lagged residual variable. So this one multiplied to that one will give us the variance covariance. Yeah? And then residuals transpose multiply to the residuals itself gives us uh, the variance. So the moral test is actually a sort of correlation estimation, but between one vector of variable and especially lagged regressive of them, which I've defined in the former slides. So when we have the moron I test in hand, we see if this is significant or not. And then we can decide what to do. We can decide on our OLS. Should we continue with OLS or OLS is, is problematic? So if we go back to the OLS, you'll see that things are not tested here. Yeah. 
So now we have this residual, we have used the weight matrix, we have find the moron I test statistic, and we will see if this is significant or not. If significant, then we have to deal with the with the problem of the spatial autocorrelation in our residuals. If not, we can go further. Any questions till now? So Mr. Sabri said no. Mrs. Mescarani is writing a question. All clear. Nice. Now we can go to the next slide. So I have a yes. question. Uh, yes. 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 Um, I mean, a very over general question. What will happen if we ignore the spatial correlation among our variables? What is the consequence? I mean, the main consequence. The main consequence is uh, first the coefficients we estimate is not consistent in our regression. The second consequence is if we predict something, the prediction is questionable. So we would have a bias uh, in our estimated effects. If yes. there is a special correlation and we are not modeling that in our analysis. Exactly. So look again to this, this, this graph. So the identity independently assumption is out so imagine you have a heteroscedastic model you have to deal with the heteroscedastic Ima imagine you have autocorrelation problem with residuals you have to deal with that they all r r violate the assumptions of the OLS here we have a bigger problem a bigger problem we see that the observation itself back to their special position, a special location, they affect each other. And when we somehow neglect it, I mean, we have to have an assumption that observations are affecting each other spatially. I mean, we, this should be first the assumption. I mean, we may not have that assumption at all. It's maybe it's not an, an issue when our study. But if this is an issue, yeah, we will have a better prediction. We will have a better causality estimation. We can be sure that so it, it's it depends on the type of research question, correct? Exactly. exactly. I mean, yeah. what exactly it, you want to do? For example, in the case of you no know, determining military expenditures of countries. So, if your neighbors' military spending affect your military expenditure, there are some perfect uh, type of. Perfect. Correlation this is with your neighbors and that is fantastic what example. Fantastic example. You know, one of the mm, I, I have tried for this lecture to find that case study. Unfortunately, I couldn't. The first time that the economist uh, in the 90s they noticed the, the special uh, issue in their econometric model was the police expenditure in the United States. So when one state spend more money in its police departments, the crime in the neighboring state was increasing. So if someone somehow neglect that, has lost the picture. This, um, I have tried really hard yesterday to find this, to bring this example here, but uh, I cannot now prove my what I said, but you have really, with your example, improved it much better. So expenditure country X definitely means more expenditure in country Y, in the military service. The same thing uh, uh, was, uh, was somehow an issue in the in the police department's expenditure. So, I don't know why, I made some nice, beautifies, uh, uh, animations, but they are lost. Okay, so now imagine that the Moranai test is significant. Yeah, so this is significant on our poor residuals, means we have a problem. 
Now the special econometrician will come and say you have to deal with the Men Men Mensky model. Mensky model says that is everything is especially to correlated with everything. So we have a y dependent variable is especially affected by itself. And then we have the vector of residuals, vector of the of the of the regressors. And again, we may have the regressors especially affecting the dependent variable. And we may have a residual which is also <laughs> uh, affected by the other residuals. So this is the most terrible thing that may happen to an economist that he has everything uh, somehow especially autocorrelated. And then he finally, in order to have a nice nice uh, error term here like this he need to estimate uh, rho lambda gamma everything the theta and lambda so if we, we write it by observation oh this here one y is is wrongly there yeah there are some stuff you know you just make sure this is this uh, y uh, a lowercase with epsilon uh, with the uh, with the in notation i is what i wanted to write so y is a function of the especially especially defined matrix multiplied to the vector of the dependent variable as you as you remember it is not it itself is not inside these values it's only the neighbor then we have the regressors and then we have the special weight matrix multiplied to the regressors and we estimate it, it theta for that and then we have the moon the residuals which could be also especially autocorrelated so what happens if some of these coefficients are significant or some not so the 10 years ago, uh, a guy, Elhorst, has given a nice, uh, nice taxonomy of the uh, spatial models. He started with Mansky model, the one which we saw, and he said, okay, everything is significant. This whole nasty spatial parameters are significant. But we start from theta. Uh, if theta is zero, then we collapse to the Kellyan Purusha model, means we have an error term which is especially autocorrelated and we have the the uh, dependent variable which is a special lag of that is, is significant again if if the the lambda collapses to zero means we don't have a problem with the error term then we can say that okay we have only a special lag this is called a classical special lag model this is one of the first models which has work with and there if the rho is also zero we collapse to <coughs> all s then if the Mensky model we have a <coughs> lambda zero means we don't have an error term but we have a, a, a rho and and theta significant yeah then we have a special Durbin model sdn and sdn if theta is zero collapses to the special lag and if the row zero collapses to a special error model, a special error model means a, a model which we only have the error term of the first model estimation. It is especially autocorrelated, like here. And then he said, if row is, is zero, we have a special Durbin model, means that we have a theta zero. So it means that in this case, only the the dep independent variables we need to create a a set of vector of uh, specially lagged independent variable and we have to test if they are affecting the dependent variable also with with the lambda also uh, significant but if if theta becomes zero then we collapse again to a special error model and uh, a special error model if the lambda against zero, we collapse to all s. Yeah. In the Hellhorst model, one model is missing. 
if rho is equal to zero in the special Durbin mode, then we will have SLX, special La regressive model, which uh, will collapse to OLS again when the theta is zero. So if we consider here, we have uh, rho zero, then this model collapse to SLX, and then if theta zero, SLX collapse to OLS. He, Elhorst has missed this word. This came later. So, any question here on this important? Uh, I, I, I say that today in this workshop, we will be focused only on these two models, the classical special error model, SEM, and the special lag model, which is called SLM or SAR. Both are used. Any question on this point? I check with the technical part if, if they hear me. So if please, if there are questions here, tell me because, because we are, uh, I try to, to somehow not to go too deep to econometric modeling here. The, the target of the lecture was more uh, practical things with R, but uh, I couldn't go to the R without telling the econometric issues. So if there are questions here. So if, uh, if, uh, if participants has a specific question regarding this session, because I guess this is important to understand this model, uh, and later on the applications are based on understanding this model and this specification. So yes. if uh, something is not clear, feel free to ask it in Farsi, yes, English. Yeah. Any, any languages, microphone can be opened. Uh, because uh, uh, I just tried to establish the foundation of what we were going to do in R. So without this foundation, we couldn't go to R. And that's uh, an important thing to know somebody right so could you explain man's q model again in parts okay thanks for the question so imagine we had this ols model mm -hmm. y is equal to matrix of red regressors x yeah so i just make it like maybe this color uh, that thickness a bit thick so imagine we have y as a function of only regressors and the residuals all s yeah and imagine that we think that the dependent variable is also affected by its own neighbors yeah, like that employment productivity in UK. It's affected by its own neighbors. And it's also affected by the deep independent variable of the neighboring region. That one. Yeah, so these two are added. So Mansky model, maybe a bit imaginary. Yeah, it happens not all the time, but it is like we say, the worst thing we can imagine. So everything is especially affecting everything. Error term is affected. Dependent variable is affecting, affected by the neighbors. Independent variable is the neighboring independent variable affecting the neighbor. So imagine that, imagine that I just, I will give in, in, the, in the exercises you guys have to work on. Imagine on the slaughterhouses, yeah, slaughterhouses. So you have a slaughterhouses in each region, and then you have a certain number of, of beefs. Then you have different prices are given by each slaughterhouse. Then you may not see, if you think about the relation between the cow in each region, the, the beef, cattle, and the slaughterhouses production level, if you just think this is a direct relation, so the number of cows in one region affect 
the size of meat production in the same region, you are completely wrong because people can bring their cow, their bring the cattle from the neighboring region to the certain slaughterhouses because they have a special contract with the guy or they have a, a, a better price there. Yeah. So if the level of production in one slaughterhouse is a factor of only the cow or the size of, of bulls or cattle in the same region, we are completely losing the picture because that guy may have service for the other farmers in other regions. That's it. That's the, that's the, the time that the regressor is especially autocorrelated. If the regions, uh, if what can be considered as an independent variable has two aspects, one in the same geographical region, one from the neighboring region on the dependent vari on, on the dependent variable that we are working with. So this is it. And then, then as we have discussed from the beginning, we may have still the residuals which are uh, uh, which are uh, especially autocorrelated because of many reasons which we don't know. There are many things we don't know in the special special relation. We cannot define everything. We say, oh, oh we know everything. No, we don't know many things. That's why it somehow it captured a certain level of unobserved heterogeneity. Unobserved heterogeneity can be captured through this special modeling, modeling because we consider that there are unobserved factors between the observation which are captured through our modeling. And that's it here. So here, if we go to, if we go to the error, we will see. So uh, I hope I have explained it up to a good level, Mr. Arjmandi. Oh, you're welcome. Good. So one question from Mr. Arjmandi. No more question. Special lagged and a special error model. So special lag model for any strange reason has two names, a special autoregressive model because it is um, like an autoregressive model. So one thing is a lag of itself. But then different guys, uh, they use different names. Uh, I say, I, I, Used both today. So if there are any questions on this model, uh, do not hesitate to ask. Uh, it will be answered any time through the whole lecture. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I will see with for Farzanagon if we need to do any more deep discussion on the other models here, except the two one in the green boxes. I think we will I, I not think, need I that. think the thing that you want to use it later on in your uh, empirical examples would mm. be good to know and to understand uh, its specification and model because that will help the students and participants to do the exercises that you want later on to give them. Okay. So uh, whatever which is needed, I guess that is, uh, you, you know better. Good. Good. So now the list of things, we can generalize nesting a special model special autoregressive combined model, SDM, a special Durbin mod model, a special Durbin error model, SIR, a special autoregressive model, and SLX, a special lag of X model, and SEM, a special error model, and OLS, ordinary list score. These are the list of things we saw in the former mm, picture. Yeah, so different one has different names. They are listed as this and today we will focus only on SAR and SEM. We may discuss next session other things if necessary or if we reach to. So a special autoregressive model as I said in this model we consider only the lag especially lag variable of the dependent variable and we consider the residual to be normally identically independently distributed. So here we don't think that we have a problem in residuals. We think we have a problem 
in R, uh, especially Lang. This is one of the mostly used model in, in special econometrics. Uh, but mainly with those guys who are doing uh, 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 regional economy or geographies. Uh, this model sees some limits when it comes to the, for example, uh, supply and demand functions when we have a certain type of restrictions imposed. But again, when we have a special uh, autocorrelation relation, we have to deal with that. So how do we deal with this? So we just move the, this term to the left side of the model, and then we come up with this term. Yeah, so we just moved this one to the left side, and then we come up to that. And then we just, we, we just multiplying by the transport transposed term, we come up with uh, With the, we come up with the, with the final equation that we need to estimate. If you look to this model, you will see that um, the coefficient beta is somehow is differently need to be interpreted. So if we receive a coefficient, we need to do some part of impact study to see how much is the effect of the variable x on variable y when we have a sort of a special effect because this is not so uh, straightforward as it is with OLS. So the model that you see can be estimated with maximum likelihood or two SLS that we will test it today in our R, uh, R uh, training. I skip to show how this uh, maximum likelihood or two SLS works. Yeah, so that's, uh, we'll leave it for any interested person to check the, the books, which I will introduce later on through the lecture. Especially autoregressive model. Uh, it's like, yeah. Oh, we are in the, on the, on the, on the slide, which I need to stop sharing here and take the other document. Okay, so imagine the OLS that we have discussed at the beginning, that that OLS only we have a problem with the error term. So error term is especially autocorrelate. So if this is the case, then <coughs> we need to correct it. How we will do it? We just move in this case. Uh, let me see if I can maybe increase the... Go to... 100, yeah, so, so we just move this part, yeah, which is the especially lag error to the left side. So we have such an error and then who can stop us? We can multiply it, uh, our equation there. Yeah, with this term, like this. Yeah, it seems that we just take in an error which is identically independently distributed. Yeah. So, and then from there, we just some reshuffling the everything. Yeah, with. Uh, I just want to see if, ah, okay, yeah, when reshuffling everything, we, we go to find a sort of direct effect of the especially lag and especially lag, lag matrices uh, on our dependent variable with an error term to be especially, uh, especially not identically independently distributed. Uh, especially independently distributed. So if you look to the things, we, we finally we come up with this term as an error term. Yeah, when we have it, 
we have a sort of possibility to estimate a sort of model. As I said, the betas here need to be interpreted with an, through an impact analysis. So they are not exactly what we think they are. They are uh, they are transformed through this whole matrix algebra calculations. This model again can be estimated through the uh, GLS feasible GLS or the maximum likelihood, which I skipped to explain, explain them that how what is the feasible GLS and what is the maximum likelihood. I hope uh, everybody is familiar or if they like uh, there are enough uh, material to check uh, this estimation approaches. So as I said, the coefficients and predictions are not a straightforward in the special regression and uh, we, in, in, we discussed the impact estimation. So somehow the impact can some theories on the impact estimation in the special regression and these two 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 models we discussed now next session. But uh, in the in the examples, I will give sort of one example. Uh, it can be also tested in the homework. So. This was from model, so SEM and SAR. Any question here, we want to go to slowly, slowly, we go to do what the empirical part of our workshop. So now we have to do some basic geography. As you remember, we are dealing with the uh, somehow space, so we dealing with the with the, with the space and we have to somehow have an idea how we formulate our observation inside the space and in this case we should first know what are the coordinates probably everybody know but in order to refresh the the pictures there are two different systems to somehow uh, map map the the, the the space, the space on, on the, the flat space on the earth. So one is the geographic coordination system is a reference framework that defines the location of features on a model on the earth. It is shaped like a globe, spherical, its units are angular and usually in degrees. There is another projection system, projected coordination system, PCS. Many things come to it each one of this one, but it contains a, a geographic coordination system we mentioned before, but it converts that into the flat surface using math and projection algorithms and other parameters. Its units are linear, most commonly in meters. And one of them which we will use and many people use in the world is UTM. So UTM is a way that we transfer the coordinates to a flat space that we think the spherical earth look a spherical earth is flat if we don't do that we have a problem in our mapping in our calculation in our distancing we need to do that to be able to do this so we have a longitude and latitudes so longitudes starts from the uh, uh, Greenwich from meridian in Greenwich and to left and right it's 180 degrees it played the rule of sort of X for us so if you imagine a Cartesian plot it is our X's and then we have a latitude to start from equator to the North Pole and South Pole with the 90 degree yeah so it played the rule of Y for us so y is latitude along as you see it is not flat so it's spherical and we need to flat it to be able to do some calculations uh, correctly on mapping anywhere anywhere we deal with the map so what to do universal transverse mercator coordination system utm is a way one way to deal with that so Imagine we put the earth into a cylinder, yeah? 
So you see the cylinder, and then we just flatten it, open it up to just smash it to the whole area of the cylinder. Maybe a bit difficult to imagine that, but uh, imaginable. Now, from cylinder, when we smash it, then we smash the spherical space to the cylinder, we have the picture that we have it now. You see here this picture. I just uh, put it there. Uh, I put it there, here, yeah. Do you see my uh, rectangular? Okay. So. Yeah, so this is a bit, uh, 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 uh. in this way, when you look at it, it's a bad shape, but then when we open it up, we have a map. You see, we have a map here. This is our map. This is our map. As you see, this is not exactly the earth, but it's a picture of earth. So we have a sort of picture of earth and we can say, okay, earth, you are a map now. Any question on, on this issue till, till this point? No question. So this is first time done by the US uh, Army Corps of Engineer in 1940s. This is sort of a war tool. So in order to, to map things well, uh, in, in order to fight well, you need a good map. So they have come up with this idea and they divided the earth to 60 pieces. So, and then in each bound, you have six degree of the, of the earth. So if we consider those longitude uh, starting from Greenwich, each six degree is one band of the UTM. So we have 60 UTM zones on the earth. And this is the material that we have to go and deal with in the special econometrics. We don't deal with the coordinates. Coordinates will not help us. Yeah. Uh, I just go back shortly. Uh, yeah, coordinates doesn't help us. So coordinates here. Uh, uh, do you see the, the coordinates G GCS now? Please, somebody said in chat, chat, if you see coordinate G GCS. UTM slide is there. Okay, so, moment. Uh, so, what, uh, what do you see now? Okay, yeah, right. So, yeah. So, now you should see UTM picture again, and we need to work with UTM. It can be work in the meter or kilometer or centimeter, depend what we need, but that's work better with the uh, a special economic. I saw that newly in some, for example, in Estata, uh, you can enter the coordinates and it do its own calculation. But in R, we need to be very careful. And when we are establishing the special weight matrix, we need to know the coordinates and then we need to know the UTM of the coordinates. And then from UTM, we can uh, make our nice uh, weight matrices. So, for Germany and Iran, Germany lay in the two UTM zones of 32 and 33. And we see it's between 
6 and 12 degree to the east of the of the longitude and in Iran we have it uh, between the degrees of 40 to 60 we in Iran we lay in four zones of the UTM Yun, uh, zooms of 38, 39, 40 and 41 so it's very important to know that UTM is a sort of flattening structure of a sphere uh, way of the, of the, of the way. So here, if, what you see in this picture is like try to put the UTM on the spherical uh, area. But each cell in the UTM considered to be a, a real rectangular. It is a, a, a real square. So it's not like a spherical or move the uh, left and right. No, no. It's like everything is parallel in the UTM way of picturing the world so we go to Mar Marburg so Marburg coordinates can be given in three different ways so we have a sexagesimal degrees which are between degrees minutes and seconds so North, 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 50 degree, 48 minutes and 21 seconds, and to the east, 8 degree, 40 minutes and 8 minutes. So the second way of presenting the, the coordinates we have discussed is with the degree and decimals. Yeah, so decimals, we just transfer that uh, minutes and seconds in the first line uh, to something between 0 and 100. And the third way to present the, the coordinates of Marburg is in decimal degrees, fully decimal. So 50 degree, 50.8 and 8.7 degrees. Nordly, north, nordlich und ostlich. So north and east. And now we look where which UTM is laying the, the Marburg. It's, it's lay in the UTM 32 and then Easting, it is 483,843 meter, and the north thing, it is 506. Uh, so these are the, the, the values from the equator, yeah, and from the Greenwich Mean Time, from the England, but in meter. In order to understand it better, I just leave the presentation shortly yeah i leave the presentation and uh, and i invite you people shortly to google earth so we go shortly to google earth to have a better idea on these things do you guys do google earth thing Anybody, anybody answer here? I want to see them. Who, 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 who enjoy Google Earth? So we go to, it seems that nobody like Google Earth. I love Google Earth. So I'm going to, to find Marburg. So I go to find Marburg. Yeah, only one person from all participants like Google it. Oh, I, I see a catastrophe for the ah second person. I, I, I thought it's a catastrophical lecture. Nobody liked the geographical data. I thought uh, the whole lecture is useless. But no, no, there are there are people. Few people are interested. So uh, uh, please uh, uh, say that you see the Google Earth on the screen. Do you see my Google Earth? It is on Marburg. Good. So, guys, do you see the numbers down that are moving when I move on the Google Earth? Do you see the numbers down? Do you see the number down? So, if you look to the down right of my screen, 
you see the minutes and degrees and seconds north, north and east do you see that yes so you see we just when, when i move i i just move with the with the, with the values now uh, i go to the options i go to the options here in the options and i will say uh, in the 3d ansicht so 3d view i will say i want the decimals okay numbers are changed you see down number of change so you can extract the, the the coordinates of each point on the earth through the help of the google earth yeah so we go to tehran we go to tehran you see guys you see we are just moving 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 and we just want to go to tehran see how's things there yeah so we go to other the square other the square i think is here is it it should be airport ah here so we go to other the square here look it is on 35 degree uh, north and 51 to the east i hope i have said correctly so now we change the option tools options and we go oh guys i like it great so degrees and the simulation so the what i said it just changed here again so we have a degree and the simulation and the most important thing for what we are doing in the special econometrics is utm utm is nicely established for us there in meter yeah you see now we have it zone 39 you remember we've discussed that before where was the iran which zone is iran in we have it 39 so if we move a bit we, we move to 38 yeah so we go to tabris with urumia lake you see here is a 38 utm zone down you can see uh, uh 30 m uh, and then uh, uh numbers in meter and you can check it so <laughs> i'm not a geographist as, as you saw i'm an agriculture economist i hope the geographists are happy with my presentation of the earth google earth and the uh, and the uh, definitions of the coordinates uh, if uh, it was not so satisfactory please excuse me so I finished up with the Google Earth thing a bit and uh, any question on Google Earth and the geography and the coordinates everything No question. So, any question up to this point? Is it clear why I have presented all these? Uh, do we need Google Earth tool for this panel? For which panel? You mean for the special econometrics? No, I just presented here to, to give an idea on the, on the UTM. Uh, uh, UTM coordinates uh, and the difference and where you can extract them. This is the reason I come up to to the Google Earth because Google Earth is like uh, is the way to to get this data one way yeah there are different ways the easiest way you come to the Google Earth you see 
but you but they are like uh, they are hidden you know i'm not a, like a god of the geography who knows all uh, things in google earth google Earth has many 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 aspects and i'm not familiar with and i just want to show next week uh, one of the few aspects that how we for picturing the the data on the on the on the plot how we can use some some facilities of google earth uh, there are many things you can do with this uh, geographical tools. As I said, I'm not a geographist. I'm a poor guy who deal with some aspects of uh, geography in economics. Any more questions on coordinates and UTM? Is everything clear? I hope uh, non-geographists, they were also enjoyed this part of the course so i don't see any any questions here so we go to so there are these are some uh, special econometric books some basics which uh, you can go deeper inside if uh, you are interested the one on the left is uh, from those guys which I showed you the model, the, the Kelihan Purusha model in the taxonomy of the special econometrics. Uh, the other two are uh, more general, so they are not like guys who are focusing on one method, they are more into the simpler modern tests and uh, the general models and they give a taxonomy of, of many things, but, but Kelly Khan was a special guy. So it's uh, interesting to say that uh, different uh, schools of uh, special econometrics were not actually up to newly even talking to each other. So look, I'm selling and this uh, Kelly Khan and Purusha, they were not talking to each other, but it seems that newly they are uh, joining and producing the literatures together. Uh, it's a good development. So, it seems that we are now at the door of our third part of this lecture, and that is the, the working with R part. As nobody asks a question, we can slowly, slowly go to the R. So, I want to see something. I want to see how many people here are uh, familiar with R. Can you use the tools and put your hand up? I want to have a picture how many people know R. One, two, three, no. So it seems that from the list of participants, we have uh, five. Only so. So uh, with uh, very sorry for these uh, five people. I need to for the rest of the team. I need to somehow give some introductory part. It could be boring for you. But uh, the absolute majority is with uh, people who are not familiar with R, it seems that. So, uh, excuses to all uh, experts, uh, we need to somehow, no, we need to, to give some introduction. So, this is how R looks like. So R has, uh, mm, R is not a very friendly interface. Yeah? It's like a coding system. You have to code your stuff. Uh, does anybody see the R uh, uh, somehow interface? If you say, please write yes. Okay, thank you. So, 
And some years ago, some people make it a bit friendly. Yeah, so they come up with the uh, with the R Studio. They make it bit friendly. So things are almost similar, but here in R Studio, we have a, a bit some more features, and we can um, save some stuff. We can do some more clicking than than coding. I prefer still the old interface, but I work with both. Today, I prefer to just uh, start the, the beginning with the, with the boat, but then I will continue in that horrible, unfriendly, uh, uh, unfriendly interface. I hope you will not be angry with me. Yes, somebody said it is based on S plus one. S plus, yeah, it is based on S plus. I just wanted to next picture give that. It is made by Ross Ihaka and Robert Gentleman, which both start with R at the beginning of the name. So they, therefore they are called R. So R and R called R. It's from 1991. It has a, it's a very strong statistical language with many features and uh, free, freely available software under G and U GPL uh, V25 license. Many people are contributing to R and R do many things from the uh, mathematical modeling to, to plotting to a statistical analysis, but it's mainly made for statistical analysis. Newly, it has not been in the machine learning issues as far as the Python. So Python take the position of R or take the, the leading uh, uh, take the lead in the machine learning issues, but it's still in the statistics R uh, is is the major free code software and the uh, the power of it is, is this free coding because there are many people from biologists, economists, statisticians, mathematicians, they contribute to its development. So it is an ecosystem which is uh, developing and nobody probably can say he know all R. The center of R is in Austria, in Vienna. So it's a core, core team and they accept the packages or the libraries written by different people to be added officially to the R. So if somebody write a contribute to R, that person will be added to the uh, contributor list. And from that contribution list, we will start a, a sort of uh, using that. But then you may find bugs. And then if you find bugs, you can and contact the authors and authors they may change it write the code or code test it again so it is like uh, uh, developing every minute depending on what people do when you use the libraries written by other people you need inside the R to install it and we will see how the installation will work and we will go today to the first example and we will together work on it. You have to, uh, to somehow interact with me and we will go through some basics of R to learn how this software works and we will slowly learn how to apply it to the data we want to do this and next session. Ready? So it seems that everybody ready. So, oh, one thing. These are books on R. ggplot2 is a, is a platform of plotting and a statistical uh, learning. So machine learning with R, you can go to the James et al book and microeconometrics with R is this book and uh, some general book it is written by Horton and Ebert is a good book on the statistical analysis of R. I end this uh, sharing now and because i am going to uh, to r slowly to so
let's uh, start with R. Oh, uh, I have shared a platform in Google Drive and you can download the first data which we need here. I will say which data you need. You can download everything uh, or uh, uh, I put the, the link in the chat. Please click on it. And then we will have an example on basics. If you go to example on basics, I share the screen shortly. So, do you guys have that? So, Google Drive. So, please download these files. So, one book, general book on the applied statistics with R by David Palfius is updated all the time. And the basic R and a data I prepared for 2009, the wheat production in Iran. So we will use this data for our plotting later. So please download this data and I will advise that you put it uh, not in a, in a very uh, deep part of your uh, computer, maybe in a drive. So I will advise uh, we do it like this. So you just maybe uh, on your drive D or C, make a, a folder. We call it uh, D exercise. So you can put it on C. I just share uh, the screen here. I just put it on, on D. So everybody have it. So exercise, then please download those data into the exercise you can check the book so everybody had made the the, the directory and to put the data in So I put the data here, like this example one basics. I share again, I save the data in this way. You can do it in any way you like. So here example data basics. So data are shared here. Inside we have uh, this applies statistics uh, and the basics, which is the uh, R codes. And then we have a, a CSV file and the XLS file. So now I will go to R console and I will say open a script and I will go to D to exercise example one basics and I will open up the basic file. Everybody has it? So Yannick has opened the, the for code for our codes. I don't see any. Any reaction from the rest?
Герман Пукай сед ес. Филип Хофман сед ес. Everybody, I will say now also open at the same time. I mean, those who are done, open the R studio also. So open the R studio, do the same thing there to have the test. We just tested with R studio. So, do you guys have my R studio? I open the file. In D. Go to D. Exercise. And basics. Open. So. Okay, anybody like to continue with RStudio? No problem. Anybody like to work with the R? No problem. Both are possible. No limits. I will uh, sometime run some stuff in RStudio, but I will work mainly in the, that uh, unfriendly space. So, sorry for that. So, everybody has it. Is there any anyone who has a problem with the opening uh, R codes in R uh, console or in R platform? If there is nobody has no problem, we can go further. So I don't see anybody. Giovanna Simic said yes. Do you have a problem? Oh, everything's okay. Okay. So, we will go now to the R. So, we start from here. We start from here in the console. I will say 3 plus 2, 5. This is the beginning with R. So, or 7 plus 9 plus 8. Yeah? So, 1, 14, minus 19, or hmm, multiplied to 4a. Yeah, so this is the first aspect. Make the hand dirty with it. Uh, that works like this. We go to that uh, unfriendly uh, space. I just... So again, so we can do two things. You can write in the console. So you see, the console was the same between our studio and uh, and the uh, uh, our console. It's the same thing. Only this one is less fancy. Yeah. So make the hand dirty. Do some calculation here. Look in the console. The point is when I write something in console and I enter the click, this is gone. So I, I, it's out of my hand. So if you go up in the data and say op, open a script or new script, I have it in German, unfortunately. I should have turned the language to English. It's too late, but I will. Say. So you have a, if you open up, you have a new script and open a script. So new script gives you the, the chance to write a new set of codes necessary. For example, if I said 4, 9, plus 9, 7, plus 78, and then if I select that, and if I run it, run is control enter, no, uh, sorry, root gunk, so back, so one is control R, so if I say control R on the code, I will run it in the console, you see, it's just running in the console, or I will select that, and I will say run. 
So run. So in English we have a run. Here is the output. So run. So you select it. First option is run. So everybody run. Was it successful? So I want now to save save this exercise which I'm working on as a new code. I can I go to the save. So here to the data or could be file in your case in, if you are in English and then save and then we will select it the the D where we are working D and we go to exercise here Ex example one I will say uh, first first hand yeah and then save you guys see it is it everything clear do you see my screen and the quotes please somebody say yes or no that I know I know that things are working okay yeah things are working so it seems that everybody has managed it till now so I save this what I've done as an exercise and I leave it and I start to work here uh, oh, uh, I do uh, shortly also in, in our studio. So hopefully everybody has our studio. So our studio is the same. I can write in the codes uh, plus plus plus, and then I will select it. Yeah. Here I need to put the control enter. Yeah, that was in the art console was uh, in the in the other software. It was control R. Here is control enter or I have selected. I click the run button up. I put up and it goes. Yeah. When the console is too full, I can empty it. Let's see. Yeah, here I click it here. I say empty. In the R console. In In this uh, uh, unfriendly space I will go right click I will say clear console right click clear console it will be clear so time to time I don't want to see all the running things and I just get rid of them I do the kill clear console so now we will do some basics so I Imagine I write this code here sum one, two, three, four. Oh. Look, if I write something, for example, I have written here, I click it. I want to go back to it. I just need to click the, the point up. So point, uh, so pointer up, pointer down on your keyboard. If you say if you click it up you return the old sentence down it will go so up down up down up down up down everybody has it you see in the console you can take it take it back without mouse it just pointer up pointer up but the down it just keep it keep it and it goes back have it somebody write something here in the chat Yannick has it Philip has it Joanna has it three has it so I inductively will say everybody have it it's not correctly statistically but I do it like so <clears throat> In R, this is sum of some values. Yeah, I just said sum of one, two, three, four, five, six. I just want to see what's that. So I want to see what is this function. I want to see what is sum. I just put a question mark there, sum, and enter. Then I will have a, a website open and it explains me what is what is the sum. Did everybody get the help? 
again. I write help. I put some in. I close it. I put it. I have it. This everybody has it. Help. So with one question mark, the function or help, uh, parentheses open, help, some in, parentheses close, enter. We have the help appears as a as a file. Good. So again, I think everybody has it. I don't know how correct is I, but it's so R has some uh, uh, features. For example, if you write a Q, print this open close and enter it, it asks you if you want to exit the, the software. So if you say, don't exit it, but just for test, Q, open up, open, open print this up, or close. And if you enter it, it will say work plus session means you want to escape, you want to save, you want to go. So you can leave it. So I say cancel, we don't go. Everybody test the queue, quit, do the same thing, quit. So, everybody has it? There's some basic features. So guys, now we want to assign some values to one vector. Yeah, so imagine here I have written x uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we do it. We say x. In R, you, you can assign the values to variables. x is a variable which, which values is 3, it's 5. I run it, I just, you see, cursor is on x uh, 5. Oh, then you can write also like that x. Um, equal to 5. Both has the same meaning. So if I write x assign the 5 to x and I run it, I have it that and if I write x there, I take a 5 and if I write x equal to 5, I run it, I will have x5 again. Yeah? Now, I assign a vector of values to x. So I will say x, you can be longer. So in order to assign a vector of values, I op I did C open, yeah. So I vector asserted. I say 54, 78, 96, 35, 47, 89, 65, 45, 25, 55. Close. Run. And I will say X. Yeah. And then I write X there and I run it. So you see? X run. Everybody has that. Everybody ha could manage the first vector in R. Please some yes or no on the chat. Miss Mascarani said yes. Yannick, do you have it? Good. Now we want to go to power to two. So imagine we are in the console now. We say x power to two, power to two. You need this sign, this sign for power. Let me find it uh, strange. Ah, here. x power to two, vector power to two. Everybody has that? Exponential x. Close. Everybody has that. So, x power to exponential x will be a big nasty number. You see, infinitive. It doesn't manage it anymore. It's a big thing. Everybody has that. So I imagine everybody has that. So now we go to we assign now these uh, nasty numbers to some x's. So we say 
y imagine y is equal to y is equal to exponential x plus x2 x power t2 run it everybody has that so i have two vectors now x and y which are at the same size and y is a sort of transformation of x now i want to add p value to it i will say p you know is that p I run it so p 3.14 i will say i want z variable z variable to be p divided by y multiplied by x z i can write z directly in console to test what is the value i can i can run it everybody have it I just say that because I want to be sure that we are connected. Yannick, we are connected. Uh, do you have the, the vector Z already? Perfect. Yannick has it, so probably everybody has it. Miss Mascari has it, Mascarani has it, so... Yeah, I just say that inductively everybody is so far as I am. Now we're going to be a bit more uh, fantastic part of the of the of the work, and we want to see a newer versions of of development. So, write in the codes one to twenty. Yeah, one to twenty. One two point uh, uh, semicolon. I think if I'm right. 20 so if i run if you run this you have 1 to 20 yeah you can assign a value to that you can say t is equal to 1 to 20 and you run it and you have t here and you have it so t is 1 to 20 1 by 1 goes up now we go for another another variable u u is as i said you can write in this way to assign the value to a variable or you can write it in this way both is correct so sequence we have a sequence of one to six thousand <laughs> with the, a step of 10 numbers yeah by 10. Check if this is an interesting thing. So I go to the to the U and I will write U here. Yeah, I have it. So simply I made a sequence of numbers. Okay. Now we have the sequence repeat repeat i forget so repeat so repeat 700 times run you again i will write it in console repeat 100 times so i have 100 times of seven so easy so it's so fun with working with r you know so now we want to slowly move to the to the vector area of, of r so i will say r imagine what we have made at the beginning we have some x's and y so x and y 
Yeah. I want to see how many uh, uh, digits do I have in my X. I will say, I will write N row X 10. I will write N row Y. Let's see. Run 10. Everybody is there. Is there anybody who doesn't have N row 10? N row of X number of rows. Yannick, do you have N row 10? Yes. I think Yannick will never go to a lecture with me anymore because I just ask him if he's there. So N column, you see N column, it is one vector, so it's only one. N column. Everybody has that? N column X4. So fantastic. N column. N column 1. N column Y. How many times? That's it. 1. And now we go further one. We say XY, XY equal to C point. X and Y. Let's see what comes out. Oh, something is wrong. Oh, here. That's it. So, X, Y equal to C, Y, X and, X and Y. Run it. And then we will see X, Y. We write in the console. We have a, a two vector side by side. We are ready slowly to the regressions. X and Y side by side. I want to reduce the, the size of the y. I put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 7, 6. So 1 million times I, I reduce this xy. xy, uh, I just run it again. Oh, that's still a big number. So more, more zero added here. 1, 2, 3 more. Yeah, here. xy. I just run it again. Yeah, no, no better. Still, still a big number. This Y is a big number. So, one more zeros. One, two, three. More zeros. X, Y. Yeah. So, you see, I can somehow make a, a, a two vector, uh, like a sort of matrix. So, matrix two side by side. So, <clears throat> what else I can do? I can take a root, SQR of the of the Y. So I take a SQR of the SQRT, SQR root of the of this nasty number here. I just run it again. Oh, reduce more. Reduce more. More zeros added. One, two, three, more zeros added. Okay. Now we have a smaller numbers. So, guys, are you all at this point? Different type of combination of the values of two variables at the same size of vector. So, I cannot put this x and y together if they have a different size. They, I can put them together if they have a 10 members. 11 members yeah so we need to be sure so now we enter to an important area of the matrix algebra so i want to make a matrix in r i will say oh no, no one one more thing i want to combine these two values i had this x no i would just want i want to combine x x so i will say x uh, C bind XX X comma X I just run it and then XX here if I write in the console is a is a vector of two similar thing I will take a square root of one X SQRT of one of the X's 
run and then I will write it xx oh now I will copy this I will copy this copy paste I add one one here and I will change C to R and C bind will be to row bind I will have one long row xx1 yes you know what has happened I changed the way I want to make these uh, two variables to be beside each other look to the numbers that we had and how they have transformed so in the first case I have a, a matrix of the 10 rows and two columns the second case I have a, a matrix of the 10 columns and two rows another experience xx1 I will say I want these two variable C together not R bind or C bind but C together like this xx2 yeah we run it now look what's of magic I have one vector only and if I say C bind xx2 C bind xx2 I have one vector of 20 members but somehow vertically arranged fascinating Yannick do you have it? Uh, what is inverted? Uh, nothing is inverted yet. The xx2 is transposed once with C bind, not inverted. Transposed. So I think is it time to do the first uh, hand dirty with the with the plot. So I give the first plot with 20 observations we have. That is plot of x x two comma s q r t x x two. Parenthesis closed. Please write this. Run. I have a, a sort of exponential relation here. Let's see. If I change the comma to the relation sign, I have that. The other way around. So the place of the x and y is changed. I can beautify it a bit. I will say LWT equal to 3. I make the size of things bigger. Make it bigger. Why, why, why three? Maybe, maybe more. Maybe ten. Like here. Yes. I change it to comma. Again, the other way around it comes. So you see, the x and y can change their places if I say that. So more on plotting and beautification things on next session. But today is like a hand warming. So guys, uh, oh color, color. We say call equal to red. We go, yeah, nice. To blue, we just change it to blue. R is a very strong graphical uh, uh, software for publications and producing uh, important uh, statistical uh, figures. So, everybody happy till this point? Don't forget, if I put this sign, means these codes will not run. So they are just for commenting. I can write the comments in such a such a sign. For example, I will say here matrix. So far, so good. Hands up.
Is everybody there or everybody is sleeping? Hands up, guys. Yannick is here. Miss Mascarani, hands up. Oh, the rest are sleeping? Uh, that's a very... It's very discouraging. Guys, if, if you don't know all, and if you don't work tonight, I'm sure that you guys will just collapse with the exercises I just cooked up for you guys. Yannick, just, just make a picture of those who didn't put their hands up. We have a problem here. People are not coming with. Guys, if you have a question in Persian or English, you are welcome to ask, yeah? The door is, is open. Yannick, I, I catch everybody. I think many people are, are not really into coding. Guys, you have to be in coding. A coding mood today. So, very discouraging, but we continue. It seems that we have a, a we have a four very active member in the team. So, next step. Next step. We go to the matrix algebra. So, imagine I will say M, you have these codes also in the codes I said you have to download. M equal to matrix 0, 1, 1, C, open, look. Yes, one question from Yannick, please. Yannick, maybe say it with the audio to see if things works. A good question from Yannick. Yannick, say it in audio. Can you? Okay. Yes, so the question right, is why an arrow. Do the, I have to first, the get class uh, open is not the, working. the package spatial or? Yes. Okay. Look, look, look. We, we, uh, and the next day lecture here. In the console, write uh, two, two question marks. Two question marks in the in the in the sign, and then write that that exactly get class as it is. Right. Yeah. So write it as it is. After two question marks. Right. Yeah. And now enter. I get the. What will you have? Right. It tell you where you will find it. Yeah. So. Here it is tell you that in which uh, library you have to look after that. It could be that you, that library so is not installed with you. So spatial is a package, right? I need to. Yeah. And no, no, that's uh, something we will enter to later. No, 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 no. Don't, 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 don't think like that. So write with one question mark one question mark so here it is from the methods yeah you see and if you go you will see this is a package of methods you have the the first time at the beginning you said methods and get class methods yes. get class you have it yes so methods get class so get class is a function from the library of methods and you should have it. If you write one question mark and then if you put a function which you don't know, 
and you enter in the console if you receive okay. something like this means you have the package installed already but if you don't take this you need to use the two uh, two okay. two question marks to see where is that fine thank you good nice so you're welcome so uh, guys from iran and anywhere you can also open up the audio if it's an difficult for you, you can ask the question in persian no problem the answer will be both in english so now we go to the matrices we go to the matrices so you see m is write m equal to a matrix parentheses open c defining the vector of four values 0, 0, 1, 1, comma so parentheses close comma n column equal to draw to dimension equal to list null comma minus max you have it even there so you don't even need you just can you can do this like copy this copy this copy copy and then paste it in the console yes this is another way to have something you don't need to run you can copy paste in this way and now if i write m i have the matrix the title of two columns is min and max with two rows this is a st strength of the of the of the r so you can come up with the with the matrix possibilities we go to the next matrix yeah, the next matrix so we can we can make a, a matrix without even names yeah so we can do a matrix like this we can say m equal to matrix n to column and we just get rid of all these rest so this all out and i just want one matrix you see i will have it yes but without names so when i say dimension dimension names when i say null in the first place it's like exactly matrix i and j so I say I null. I don't want any name for the rows, but for J, I will give two two names for the J's, min and max. And I don't want anything. I just get right in this way. So now we go to the next matrix. So I put some more bigger numbers. I can say n column n row. You know when I say n row, we just test it. How will be the difference between n column and n row if I write n row? So if I say n row instead of n column, n row, and I run this matrix with these names, yeah? One is time is like this, one time is like that. Oh, I made a mistake. That's not a no, no difference between the two. I wanted to make it in a way that the numbers are filled differently. So first the rows, first the columns will be filled with the rows and then the column. But somehow it didn't take my order. Why? So we do something like that. We say n row 4. If I do this, Oh, error is given. Ah, dimension names should be go out. Dimensions name out. I just say I want this. So a matrix of one column and four rows is produced. I will say I want one row. Yeah. And then a matrix of one row and four columns for this. I won't say now repeat I will put here inside I will put here inside repeat seven twenty one time and I want seven rows
nice I have a matrix now so these matrices can directly go to those econometric stuff you know if you are more advanced you can transfer data as a matrix and just multiply it and take your regression in R now I now after this imagine this is our, our uh, maybe we just change it we say the same sequence of uh, no we say uh, we say 1 to 21 so 1 to 21 and rows 7 yeah so we have such a such a matrix if I say now and row and I will say yeah so just keep it like this so n row we have now a matrix of three columns of seven rows and i will say i want only to see the first row i will select i will i will i will look to this bb as a matrix and i will say i want the first row i write the one here and i will see only one i will write i will write one to three here i will see that yeah so simple i want to see i want to say i want to say i want only the first and the last column the first and last column i will take it out i will write here c remember from the beginning comma three just click i got it so first and last column of the main matrix bb so far so good we want to jump to the data so so right now we have to go back to our uh, uh, the place that we have the data here it was in in D exercises example. I have to say this is the way that you see the data in the windows. So the 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 R interface in Mac is a bit different. Yeah, but then I cannot present it here. So we just we go further with the with the windows uh, interface. So I go up and I select the path. I have here select the path. I come back to the R and I paste it there. Yeah. I call it wheat with, uh, with uppercase for W, wheat path. And I save what I have taken from the address forward slash, not backslash, forward slash. Starting with the quotation another forward slash and then here i will write the name of the file the file i have is a csv read iran 2019 i copy this i copy the name to be exactly the same thing i put it there dot csv yeah so be careful everything should be exactly as it is or is very sensible to this issue then there are different ways that the so the file uh, which we have we're going to connect now yeah is a csv file so csv is a comma separated variables or can be connected to many different data sorts but one of the sorts that it works really simple with for the small data set is the csv it can connect to stacks it can connect to access microsoft access it can connect to oracle it can to connect mysql server everything so r has the possibility to swallow the data from any type of data bases that you can imagine yeah so now i read the path path read. And then 
with path header through run so you see what happened i don't see a real data structure in my case what is it do you guys see this structure when you run that or you see something else did anybody reach to this point did anybody receive error Yannick has the data Annika has the data Yona has it Mauricio has the data nobody in Iran has the data it seems till now this this point nobody in Iran has the data Good. We continue. Guys, this data, we cannot work with it. You know, we need to change it. Because we need to have a data structure, a proper one. So add one two to this CSV and run it again. Do you have this structure of data now? Look. Who has this? data frame nicely Mauricio has it Yannick has it Something has happened with the Iranian participants. Everybody is just inactive now, seems. Admin should register them. So. Oh. German cannot take the wheat pen. So just we just check why he can't. Did you reach to this point? German. I think you have probably has written something wrong in your in your syntax code. I just put it in the in the chat. Maybe use this. If you have one by one like me, mate. So so, so those who have the data already yeah we just go to the names so we want to see what type of variable we have so read csv read table read text read marks there are different functions this read csv2 is a function to read a certain sort of the csv files so now uh, I will see, want to see what type of variable I have here. I have here provinces names and range fit wheat production, irrigated wheat production, total wheat production in each province, and then I have the area under range fit and irrigated wheat production and the productivity. I mean, production irrigated wheat per hectare and the range fit wheat per hectare. Everybody see the names. Also test that head of the wheat and the tail of the wheat. Head gives you the first five rows, six row, first six rows, and tails give you the last six rows of the 33 observation we have. We can also do again like the before end row. 
how many observations we have in with with data so da data here is an object yeah for a with wrong written so with I just run it 33 everybody has that 33 good so data can be dealt uh, differently in R with if you attach the data to if you attach the data to the system then you don't need to take care about the original name of it of the of the, the object the data attached to but if i don't do that i have to write it all the time yeah for example if i now write irrigated per wheat per hectare yeah i just take this which is one of the names here if you go to the names again names irrigated wheat per hectare yeah copy running the you see nothing yeah doesn't see anything but if i say wheat at a dollar wheat dollar strong irrigated wheat per hectare yeah if i say that copy paste i take some numbers i see a vector of data in this variable another way is i attach the data so if i attach the whole wheat to the system now i can go and say what is inside this and i take it so and i want to get rid of this i want to change the data set i want to use something else i detach it so i attach it and i detach it detach it and now if i write again the irrigated wheat per hectare i don't get anything hey yeah? It's, it is now in, uh, stayed in the, in, the, in the memory. So when something is staying in the memory, then it is there. This is another issue. So a detached didn't work. Wheat is wrong. So no, no. Detaches didn't work. So right. Detached didn't work. Thank you, Yannick. Detach the node. Now I cannot write it. So if I go back with this, with the with the cursor, I go go up, I say I don't have it again. Yeah. So that's it. Now I will say rain-fed and irrigated. I assign two variable to that. Yeah. Here, I assign a variable to this. So I say I R is equal to irrigated irrigated wheat per hectare productivity run it it is based on the kilo so something between three and five rain fed i do the same rf yeah now i want to see a bar plot of of that for 33 provinces i have this data i check it Everybody has the word plot. So it says that there are like 33 provinces and here we have the values up to maximum 6,000. Does anybody has, everybody has the word plot. Good. Now we check the war plot for the RF for the rain fit. One province has a the heavy like the, the high productivity with rain fits. Yep, you can check it later. Which province is there? Yeah. So war plot for that. Now we plot IR. Rain fit. Plot only one plot. You see, we see the numbers only with indexed. Yeah, the same as a bar plot. But we now check the histogram. Histogram of the of the productivity irrigated wheat production per hectare. Yeah. 
nice simple board plot simple histogram we can define how many breaks we want with the irrigated plot so here we go for the for the for the breaks so maybe 20 this is a non-parametric type of estimation so 20 breaks and look like nasty not very good but it shows some issues with the data so you can see the the gaps there if you have not many observation actually so we say 12 12 breaks Ooh. so by average is it doing something more than uh, it's as average uh, you can say mm, irrigated wheat in Iran for more than four tons. Yeah, in Germany, like rainfall is more than seven. So, so FR something has gone wrong there. Histogram of FR. said you cannot find it why so oh it can now it can so hey or f oh i have written f r good oh here is is le is lost and that's a one outlier i don't know is it really outlier it could be could be an outlier we can do some beautification we can do some add color equal to red again yeah green yeah everybody has that histogram in green Yes, I, I noticed that it is a, it is not FR but RF. Yes, RF. So, so I think we are in a in a stage that we just check two. We can put two two graphs together and to watch them. So we give par MF row means that you put in a row two two graphs together. Yeah, let's just go here. Par MF row. The x x uh, limit can be defined that we just have, for example, fourteen for boot. Yeah, fourteen up to fourteen. So we can just uh, uh, homogenize the scales and the frequency. It's possible. We leave it for the next session. More on the plotting in R. Yeah. So histogram says that rain fed uh, average production in provinces 2019 is more than four ton in in no irrigated more than four ton rain fed uh, less than 1500 so everybody has the mf uh, mf row can be checked with the mf column so if we say mf column yeah and then we run these three three lines together just run. we will have it the other way around yeah. no one ah mf column so two one i forget this this will make the deer yeah. ah mf column right i need to in this case to put it row because i don't have so many plots it said there is a wrong symbol in the in the plot working yes yes but then par mf row to one it should work yes under each other yeah so we can make an empty space here if i say two by two i will have that yes
and I make an empty plot look what we will have doesn't work okay so everybody is up to here enjoy the plotting with R at this point Good, 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 good. Very encouraging, very encouraging. Now, now we want to go to regression area. So we move from the uh, these fancy plotting things to I attach the, the data of the wheat again to the system. So we will write or maybe not, maybe not. We just we just keep it keep it uh, no let let's do it. Let's do it. I just attach the data to to that. Attach the width, and then I will say I define some variables here. For example, irrigation production and rainfall production. Width dollar song. Just look to this this tree. Width dollar song. Uh, irrigated width production and rainfall. RFP rain fed so wheat at the dollar song uh, rain fed fed production here I must define a smaller variable shorter and I assigned it to some 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 values here IRA refers to for me the irrigated irrigated wheat area in in each province and the rain fed a rain fed a wheat area in each province and TA total area around that one and IR and FF as you remember it is the the productivity so this is the same thing so we we just leave this part we don't need it for any reason okay now I look to the causal relation plots so if I plot, as I said, if you remember, we have done it one time. So IR, irrigated wheat productivity, means per hectare, as a epsilon, as a Y function of irrigation production of wheat in one province. Do we see anything? So, so here is the total uh, wheat production of one province and uh, on the y axis we have the, the irrigation productivity it seems that if we didn't have if we didn't have a sort of two outlier probably we could see a very strong line or maybe we have already a line a very strong line here so we do it for area production per hectare as a function of the total area covered by irrigated uh, wheat areas in provinces in it hmm look like uh, there is a I see a relation so I, I reduce the size of this variable I to to from hectare to thousand hectare let's see what's what's come out it didn't take it when this happens you can do it like this i print is open print is close yes so ira irrigated area of wheat production in each province and y is the wheat production irrigated wheat production per province yeah so It seems that we can say the, the provinces which they have more wheat production, they have higher productivity. Very weak, but it may be possible to say it's this. So imagine now I change the position. Yeah, I change this position. I, I revise the, the, the position of X and Y. Not a logical thing, just as a thing. Yeah. 
But here, if I change the relation sign to comma, I will have again the same picture as, as before. So in the plots, when I put a relation, it's, it works like a, a equation. But if take if put a comma, it works like an x and y. So here, uh, IR, uh, uh, irrigation area divided by 1000 is an x, and IR is the wheat production is y. I can put a, put a, some beautification here, like 10 color equal to blue. Yeah. All elements of the plot can be touched and changed. But this, I will leave it for the next session. But just take a, take a, take a, a, a view how it works. So, I think is uh, you have a, a grasp of an idea of how the the plotting works in R, and now we do one of the last parts of before the lunch break, and that is the regression. A simple OLS here, IR, which refers to the wheat production of irrigated wheat per hectare as a function of the total production of the wheat in each province and the area of the wheat production in each province. I assign that as a formula. So this is, a, this is my dependent variable as a function of my independent variables. I run the regression, yeah, or I just control R. Anyway, that you run your data and I have a, a, a regression run. So if I write here regression P, I receive intercepts and two coefficients, nothing else. If I put this in the summary, summary of the reg P, I receive more details of this regression. I have forgotten to say that if this whole database wheat, wheat, if I put the wheat to the summary, I will receive data on the wheat, data frame. So data wheat is a data frame. Don't forget, these are the terminologies in R. So wheat, which we assign some data through the read CSV to, to it, is a data frame. And then we have mean, maximum, medians, and the, the first quartile and second quartile, and these are a very useful information. So we can take it. Summary works with the regressions also. So I put the the object of regression. So reg P is an object of regression. I put it into the summary. I take the results. Everything significant. R score 30. R score is 35 and adjusted R score 30 percent. Yeah, just for test as you see. There is a, a feature of the of the R which is particular. So I put the object in plot. And it starts to give me residuals versus fitted, fitted residuals. Residuals versus fitted. You see, fitted residuals are residuals. Fantastic. Normal. So we will have a QQ plot of the standard uh, residuals versus the theoretical quantiles. We have a scale location, standard residuals. And we will check the leverages and cook distance and standard the residual. So it has a fantastic power. Everybody is here. I need some yes or no, some comments, some, some critics. Good. Now we want to see if we have a heteroscedasticity in the model. For that, we need to install a package. Everybody test this library LM test. Run it. Do you have that run? If yes means the package is, is in, doesn't need an installation, just need to be updated. So Mauricio has it. 
Anybody else? Did anybody have a problem with, uh, with running the LM test library? Which the Burish Pagan test is there? Yannick, no problem, or is no problem? I imagine that the others, they have no problem. So I leave the installation of packages for the, uh, after lunch break, uh, lunch break. So, I put the reg P, which is an object of regression, into the BP test. So BP test, I put the object in, I say a studentized true. Yeah, so I don't consider a normal, but a studentized, a studentized distribution for the, for the variables. And I run it. P-value is large. Large means not less than 5%. It's not small, but large. What does it mean? I have written the explanation already down. It means that we don't have a stress elasticity in this data, which is a strange. I think if we play with those outliers, we get the stress elasticity, but we don't have it. So if the P was significant, the hypothesis, the hypothesis of homoscedasticity has been rejected. But it's not rejected. So we go to do some uh, statistics with the, with the regression itself. So guys, right, so we have uh, run the, the regression. We have the estimates for intercepts and two variables of the total production in each province and the area on each province. So the data tell us that the both variables are p-value, very small, significant, and uh, the model works well. I, I, but as you know, this is just a, a funny model I made for that. So now we open up, we go to exercise, two packages, example 2SP, and now we are going to install the R packages. So if a package is not installed, if a package is installed, yeah, for example, library SP, we just select this, so uh, we run it. Either we copy it, put it in the uh, in the console. I just kill in the console to to be to be a, to have a, a free free hand. So the console is empty. Copy the SP and put it there. If it is, didn't work, if you see, you see an error that it is not there, we need to install it. Installation of the packages has different ways in R. Yeah? One is like this, what I have written already. You write install package and dependence true. This is one way to install. And if I select that, for example, if I, I run this, uh, because I have it already, it uh, doesn't... Uh, Think so. Let me let me let me install another package. So, uh, when we want to install the packages in R, we need to follow a certain rules. We need to go to the libraries and select a CRAN, CRAN mirror, and then we have to select Austria. Austria is the center of the R. So we say okay. So we have the latest updates, and then for example, then we will install the packages. Yeah, install the packages. And then here we have, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, because I have this, I will go to something else. I will go to some volatility uh, uh, file, RU Gorge. I will go to RU Gorge, which I don't have it now. And I will select it from the list of packages, RU Gorge. And then I, I, I click it OK, and it starts to unpack the material and add this library to my package. You see, something like this happens. And if things work well, I have the package installed with the additional package, which is said, we said dependence to, and we have it. And then when I want to see if things are OK, I will say library. Are you gorge? Are you gorge? And I run and I have it. And if I run it again, it will have no messages. Done. It's there. Now, we have this list of packages that we need for a special stack. So, 
installing first then running so my advice is you one by one install this through the codes i have provided select the austria and then after you finish run the codes everything clear for that Yana, can you install the packages? As I said, two ways. Yes, Yana can install, so two ways. One way is motion installed, master installed. Good, so a special rig take time. Yeah, so no worry. No worry, it will take time, some, some of them. So, uh, guys, when you are done with the installation, uh, you can leave the system to install, and now I will go to the next, uh, somehow, thing. The next thing that we need to discuss. So, that was what I wanted to discuss. Now, the important thing is to know what we are dealing with. What we are dealing with is a special object. A special object can be a point, a line, a polygon, or grids. Yeah? These are different things that are available in all. And I have prepared some example now that we will go and we will work with that together. And you will have a, a, a sense of what is that and what we are dealing with. And after that, we establish the, the first rate matrix. And I think we will have an exam the time to run the first regression model. And I think then we will uh, be over and it's time for the test distribution. So don't forget, we have polygons, lines, po uh, grids. But the, the, the center of all of these things is the UTM. Yeah, UTM is what we need also to establish our weight matrix. So, why do we need the weight matrix? Because we will have a, a special object. From there, we establish the neighbor list. You remember the neighbor list we had in that matrix on UK. And from there, we establish our special weights. So, the functions in R, which are working like this, they transfer the special object to a neighborhood and to the weight matrix or cell to neighborhood, grid to neighborhood, car nearest point to a neighborhood, and polygons to neighborhood. And then we will need another function, which is a neighborhood to a list weight, yeah, which is the weight matrix. Yeah. So, get ready. You need to go to the next examples which I prepared for you guys. And that is again in our uh, Google Drive. It is called uh, two different files, I will advise. Something said the following people are listed for the assignment group one. Mm -hmm. Two Yannick. Okay, so two groups. Uh, we got it. Now, let's make it maybe a bit uh, difficult for me because now I, I had prepared an, a, an exercise for Iranians, but now we have only one Iranian in those people who want the certificate. So we need to use only two German assignments finally. Okay. So, uh, guys, uh, 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 go to the Google Drive again. There we have two things. Example 3, 1, Iran map. Example 3, 2, Germany map. Please go and in the exercise uh, folder you have made in your D drive or C drive anywhere, make the same drive and download the things there. The doc documents there. So I will do the same. 
to be with you guys. So, Germany map and Iran map. Copy both and go there. So, now I will start with the Iran map first. So everybody has installed the packages. Uh, Mauricio has a question. Please, Mauricio. Is it a question to me? So when they are, it's just uh, downloading the the SPDE P and a special regression. Yes, there are dependencies. Definitely, there are things that you have not installed and they have to come. But I think first, please uh, manage the manage the files, download them from Google and put it there. I just uh, share it as it is. So let's see where we are. Okay, we will be next there. Uh, I just shared the screen. Yeah, please put the, the drives there. We have exercise uh, one Iran and exercise two Germany. So exercise one Iran, uh, exercise three one Iran is if you look, I put two things there. One is called Iran coordinates. Yeah. There we have the coordinates of uh, uh, look to look to the coordinates. So there are like a, a, a data I could download from somewhere in the websites. So uh, we will check how we can deal with this data. So please have uh, the data there. Iran coordinates and Iran map, yeah, these are the, uh, the data for some idea on the special, uh, special uh, uh, objects. So, everybody has the, the installation finished? Maybe you just uh, cancel the, the special reg installation Mauricio and install the rest yeah I mean SP SPDEP and so on uh, yeah we maybe we will not use it today yeah yeah mass has a problem for her it's not uh, going fast also So I just uh, say slowly what we are going to, to do. Maybe uh, things will be installed uh, till then. So we will open up this Iran map. And we need to run those packages that uh, we had discussed. We were like uploading. I run it two times, so I have everything. And then I need to to bring the, the data, the coordinates data to this part. So you should uh, 
may be replaced this path will replace that the data are now so the data are now is in this area so copy this path again uh, save it here so Iran coordinate data you can keep because it's a file name save it there and forward the slash one time two time so this is the path so now the path I run so I have the path in and I run the what is called Shahr coordination so it refers to abbreviation of the Shahristan coordination the Shahristan is county in here and I attach the data as you see I check what is inside there are city latitude longitude in the Excel in the in the CSV file if you remember and now one question do you guys have the map data uh, library Yannick do you have map data library please check that please check what I put in the in the in the map so before going to 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 Shahrastan I will say we test something else so library map is a, a sort of uh, available things in the in the R uh, and now we check the the data available to who see a, 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 a just a white map of Germany Yannick do you see the map of Germany yes so have you managed to run that So you can take some sort of maps uh, uh, from that. So for Iran, we can run it like here. And we have a map, a, a flat map of Iran. There. Now, after this test, we go to our uh, file path again. We plot those latitude longitude I just extracted. What do you see? What is this? Can somebody say what is this? What do you what do you see here? Those one of the geographs in the list of listeners. Can you say what's this? not exactly it's not the map of Iran but it is the coordinates so coordinates if you remember latitude longitude of the counties so the center of the counties so Shahristan the center of the counties of Shahristan yeah so that's it that is a, a thing which we need now uh, I need to upload one more file sorry guys uh, I have forgotten to do this and that file is is here a second I will upload now two different type of zip files that you guys need to unzip. And uh, put it in the in the place that you have the exercise. So, 
Uh, forget, sorry for that. Uh, in in the in the exercise Iran map, I upload two files now. Not too much. It's, it's short, but these are our shared files which I found. And please go and uh, download it when it's uh, there. So one is for the provinces and one is for the uh, uh, counties center. So provinces there and the uh, counties also coming. Omasa is uh, left behind. Yeah, you can, and also you can put all files in the in one place, and you use the the, the following code. Uh, just uh, give it, give it to you. The S K K W E D is the way. So S K W E D. If you put files you need in one place and then just that the codes are there and if you write this then you don't write the paths anymore you just write the name of the file but uh, it make it very messy normally so this can be done uh, so two zip files are uh, uploaded one is 1.3 megabyte one is 3.7 megabyte uh, uh, guys please uh, uh, download these two files uh, from the the, the the link I've shared they are in the uh, they are in the example three one Iran map. Please download that and unzip them and put them in the same exercise place. Uh, meanwhile, I have an advice when you are busy, some people busy with this, some people are uh, downloading. Uh, my advice is to uh, you guys go to the following link and see if you can download. These files also. So the link which I'm sharing with you guys is the place to have a shape file of Germany at the county level from the one of the official places. Please go to this place and to the other exercise. Check if you can download these files. So you go to this website. I, sh I just show you what to do. You go to this website here in the direct download. You download the last option. It said Geo Referenzierung UTM 32s. Yeah, you just click this and download this file and put it in the put it in the in the place that it said uh, um, uh, example three two Germany map. So, two zip files from my folder and shape files from this folder. Yeah, it should be here now for, by anybody who has clicked. Just two and a half megabyte. Why? You cannot extract the files. That's very bad.
Which one you cannot extract? The German ones or the Iranian ones? Is there anybody else who cannot extract the Iranian data? Okay, the file need to be downloaded is there. So could everybody download this data set at least? This data set, direct download, just click that UTM tree here. Somebody has not written in chat. So Mauricio, did you manage to, to extract the zip files? So you have the files extracted. It should be now in two different uh, folders for you like this. It should be in two different folders for you like that. Yes, I put it there. So guys, please do it like this. So in the exercise 3.1 Iran map, put the two shape files of Iran, province and Shahristan together. Yeah, like this. So no zip files, just the files. So we, what we need is this file, this file, province, here SHP files, which is shape file, and here Shahristan, this one, HSP file, uh, Shahristan. Yeah, so these two files should be downloaded. Uh, who has it already? Who has downloaded the zip files? So Anika said if I can upload the data in the zip file, uh, so that that's a, is, a, is a solution. So I will make two folders here. Folder one, I will say province, province, and folder to county province county so in the county I upload the shape files here for the counties upload files and uh, Okay. So Yannick has uh, managed to download the, the German files. So now uploading the provinces, Iran provinces. Let me, this, this should be finished. The finish isn't, the download is not finished. So, uh, Anika, you should go to, especially econometrics with our provinces and counties. There you will have uh, the shape files, but please save it under this uh, clear name under your exercise. For example, call one uh, like this.
Yeah, so provinces under the Iran provinces and counties under Iran Sharistan. It need a bit more minute and Uh, you, uh, as I said, you can use the zip files if you have already downloaded. You can use this because Anika couldn't download it, so that's why I have uh, uh, used this trick. It's not that most, but you can. Let me check again if uh, things are alright. So, count is uh, downloaded. Yes. Provinces not downloaded. I uh, will do upload it now. So data provinces. So so German files are downloaded. That did everybody download the, the German files? Yannick has uh, downloaded. So province data also uploaded. So everybody should have now access to the whole uh, shape files of Iran provinces and uh, counties. Please save it in that uh, exercise three one Iran map under. Yes, to the German file, but I can't download the Iran files as zips only as rare. So, uh, German, you can go to the uh, your Google Drive, and there you have uh, data on Iran shape files on the provinces and counties. You can download it there, and then put it on the folder names I define. So. <laughs> Uh, we need to go further. Uh, I hope everybody has the data now. So we have checked the, the plot of the latitude longitude. Yeah. Mauricio, warning message, read shape. Okay, Mauricio, uh, as I said, download it to a folder I said. Yeah, download it, download it to the folder I said. And then we go one by one. So uh, I share the the screen again. Here is the screen. So Pat Province, yeah. Please put the right path where your shape file can be found. For example, if my shape file look. My shape, shape file is here. My shape file is here. Iran map. Iran provinces. My shape file is here. I just take the path there. Copy. I save it here. Forward the slash. Forward the slash. And. I put the province shape there at the end. So this is my path. Yeah, this is my path. Provinces. It should be I start with this at the beginning. So everybody is there. Path province. Is it there? I just run it. Yeah. And then I go to Iran. Yeah, I go to Iran province path. I just run it here. Look, I just run it. Warning, no problem. No problem. We check the summary. We check the summary. You see some data are in. Yeah, that's it. No no problem if it, it is a uh, give a warning. And now I plot it. That's it, guys. Who have it? We have. No, we run the German Iranian ones. Iranian ones. You you keep the German ones. We go to it later. Yannick, do you have the map I have shared now? 
Mauricio has it. Aniko has it. So guys, congratulations. Let's let Yannick come. Master, do you have it? Master is out, look like. So, Yannick, do you have it? Did you cut the map? Oh, man. Master is just left behind by installing. Yeah, we need to go forward, unfortunately, Master, because uh, uh, I think there is, should be probably some problem with your system or uh, your internet is very slow. Yeah, but you have the codes, you can run it. So we're not doing too much. We just uh, run the codes here. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what we got. This is the first. Yannick, do you have it? You should have this uh, uh, map of Iran. Yes, Yannick has it also. So this is the, the, the polygons, yeah? We have used, look to the codes that you have used, guys. We have used the polygons, so read the shape poly. The polygons are as a special subject, yeah? And we have got it. And now we want to see what is inside this object that we have. We go, we close the, 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 the figure, we go in, we run it. We have a SP package class. So Iran is from a class of SP packages, a special package, yeah? And now we look to this str slot Iran data, yeah? Here, there we can see what we have inside this data. The most shocking things is the UTM. Who can find the UTM in this data? Did anybody find? So the shape file that we are dealing with, yeah, the shape file that we are dealing with carries these data sets inside. Yeah. And the most important things for us is the UTM that I will tell you how you will extract the, the UTM from this that's it we go to the coordinate we assign a new variable coords to coordinates and we extract that so we extract the data from the coordinates so check it there what do we have we have the utm so utm is a part of UTM is a part of the shapefile and it is what the shapefile is made on. It is not the latitude you want to do. It is the meter. It is the, the what we have uh, worked with. So we now plot it. Look. Oh, this is the center of provinces and some more because Iran has 33 provinces. Here we have the 50 points. Yeah, 50 points. And coordinates, don't forget, guys, is based on the meter. So we have extracted the coordinates from the shapefile. Yeah, shapefile is defined as an object, and I've defined that. So now we go to the counties. We just do something, something more like uh, I, I run it from here. But uh, guys, uh, again, uh, please uh, adapt. Uh, to the path. So I will name it path county. Path county. 
should be near to the uh, older file here, Iran Sharistan. Or you have to see, you have to see where you have the file. Yeah, just just check it, and the same as uh, Evo. I run it from my older, older path I had. Again, the same name, Pat County. I define Iran to Pat County. We received the same uh, 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 warning that uh, uh, Mauricio was frightened once. Yeah, this is, but we don't care. We don't care. We can go further. We checked again. These are the parameters we have inside. We have some parameters inside that won't, that, that um, for us, the most important one is the UTM. Don't forget, UTM is what we need. And we can extract the UTM. Let me see if this works. No. So we extract the UTM again and we plot it. This time, we have the county centers. Fascinating, no? So we have like a, a, we can check how many, how many points we have here. Three hundred thirty-seven is not a still the whole counties in Iran. Iran has like four hundred nine counties, but uh, that's a good picture. So this is not a map. This is only points, uh, Cartesian points, that we have discussed the coordinates on UTM. And that's it. Where is the where is the plot here? Here plot is fascinating. No. So who got this? Who got the, this this nice plot? Yannick, do you have this? Maurice, you has it? Only Maurice, you have this. Master, did you manage to install the stuff? Anika, do you have it? Yannick needs a minute. Okay. So, guys, we go back to the first Excel file we have uh, extracted. I just run it again. If you remember, we had the coordinates there. We didn't have the... We didn't have the UTMs. Yeah? That file in the exercise on Iran coordinates. The difference between these two is that we can't do a weight matrix with this data, but we can't do it with that data. Yeah, with this data we can't do, we can't do a weight matrix. Because these data are not based on the idea of a, a flat. It's not a flat. Yeah, but those coordinates we have extracted from the, the shape file, that is flat. So, <laughs> I hope Yannick uh, will take the file. I want now go to the German files. Nice. We go to German files. I clean the the area here. Open the scripts. Exercise Germany. So you guys should have it also. The thing that you have to do is you have to go to the UTM. So you have to find the, uh, you have to download those data which, which we, have, we have mentioned. Those data which we have mentioned. Yeah. So those data from the website of BKG. We need those data now. 
and we need to I just show you how this data look like hmm. it's just a second KG not 200 not 200 UTM not 200 so guys we have this path just follow this we need this path yeah so wherever you put the data it has to start from this point not 200 uh, 2500 not 2500 with some other stuff, not 250. And then we have knots one, knots two, and knots three. These are the three shape files which we need today. Yeah, three shapes file we need today. Shape file. So shape files are normally big. So if you see the shapes file here, they have different size. Yeah, shapes file here. So guys, please make it sure that you have the data from that Excel file downloaded from the web website, yeah. Rightly, that's this data, this data here. Rightly saved in this folder of exercise. I just go there again, exercise, Germany, yeah. So make it sure that you have this data, this data folder rightly saved here look here please make it sure that you have it and then we need three path lines for three shape files first level second level third level this is the way that the administrations work in germany yeah so Everybody has that, everybody has downloaded, everybody has put the data on the folder of exercise uh, example 3 to Germany map. Yannick, did you save the file? Okay. Now, we go for the action. Let me, let me make it in a good way that I have a control over what's going on. So packages SP should, package of SP and maps tool should be there. These are the, the packages that we use for this action now. Should be installed. So now we go to the path, as I said, knots one, yeah, knots one. 200, uh, 2,500 nodes. This is the path I have planned for today. I run it. I have it. Then I assign it to that. I just made the names. Don't care. It's like Wahlkreis means in Germany, the election district. So Wahlkreis, you have the codes also. So I put the path in. Yeah. Again, the same warning comes. Don't care. We check what is inside the data. Again, we have some type of data. Yeah. We plot it. Yes, the first level of administration, the Bundesländer in Germany, the federal states. Who has it? Shapefile. Annika has it. Mauricio, do you have the, the Bundesländer, the, the federal states in Germany? Mauricio doesn't have. Why? Select the right path, man. Get the, the right path here and sign it to the name path. That's it. 
Oh, sorry, Mauricio. So we need to, to go further. So, guys, what you see here is another shape file. This is a, as this shape file is a sort of object with the data inside that give us the idea on uh, that, uh, that, like, say, say uh, cross board we were fighting with in the beginning of the lecture. So we go now to the second level of administration in Germany. So we select the, the Bezirk, yeah? So we run the second level, the path. So go to what is called NOTS2. So you select this shape file with UTM, which at the end you have NOTS2, yeah? Again, you run the rest, you have the second. So I put the names also a bit up for those who don't understand German. We have in Germany Bundesland, Regierung, Bezirk and Gemeinde. So translated states, governmental districts and the municipalities. Yeah. So municipalities. Gemeinde. So now we are at the level of the second knots two in Germany Regierungsbezirk. Yeah. So for example, uh, I think uh, uh, Marburg is a part of Frankfurt. I'm not sure, but probably. So who has the knots two? Annika, do you have the knots two? Anika, do you have knots too? Not yet. Yannick, do you have the knots too? Yannick has it. So I hope you guys understand what I wanted to transfer. So I wanted to transfer a different ideas of the spatial object. Because the special object is the place that we go to establish our weight matrix. And that's the point. We need that to establish the weight matrix. And we will do it in a minute. So we go to establish the weight matrix. Before that, we do the last knot three for Germany. Yeah, knot three. So please, you select this file, knot three shape file from the folder that you have you run it you come to the codes i put there which is the way so red shape poly we will read this shape file and we will plot it now we have the gemeinde or municipalities in germany yes we are there Who has the municipalities? Annika, do you have the municipalities in this map I have? So, Yannick have it. Annika have it. Yeah, but the codes are there, you know. So those who have seen, they can implement it. So I think things are clear. You have learned the path where the file are. And after the course, you can, a bit, you can work on it a bit to see this fascinating power of the of the mapping so you see this is the the cross board that we were working on yeah so we uh, uh Joanna also just uh, left behind but yeah yeah we needed to somehow uh, speed up massacre the error oh man Oh, that's me the uh, mass map tools uh, is not installed on your computer yet 
when you receive this means maps tool is not installed and library should be so go there and again you look install the file install the file and after you install the file you just uh, put the uh, the maps tool inside the library and install it uh, i mean uh, activate it, it so installation and activation you can be installed but not be activated Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, German is also is in challenge. Yeah, the concept I was tried my best to explain. I know, guys, it's a hard, it's long day, but you know, it's like uh, we need to we need to to break through. Yeah, we need to break through. Next time, I promise we will. We will do some uh, uh, revise uh, and some revisions on what we have done today. But for the exercise, back to the plan we are doing, you need to know what is the, the special object. I'm so sorry that I forced to you guys to see some aspects of it. So, so for those who have managed to come to the uh, Plot Volker, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Let's yeah, just do it. Plot Volkerize. And then you have this nice map of the Gemeinde or municipalities in Germany. Do you have it, Yannick? Good. So, with all casualties that we have, uh, Albert has the pro, plot also. Nice, Albert. Nice. Congrats, Albert. Albert has the plot. So, you guys, you can do something. Uh, you can go home and find shape files, upload it somewhere, and then plot it here to see, and then extract the coordinates. Such a fascinating job you will do today. <laughs> and then when you extract the, the, the coordinates, you know what you do? You will make a plot of the coordinates. We do it with Germany, with the Gemeinden. Just, just do it. Yeah. I just uh, take the code from that uh, Iran exercise. It was somewhere there where I, I implemented. So, yes. So I extract the coordinates from the, the shape file and plot it. So nice. Yeah. I will do it for the, for the Germany. So, yes. So, it just what I do. It just um, oh I have I no no I have not planned to have it here. So Valkyrie is extracted. I put it in the coordinate function. Yeah, so simple. And then I extract coordinate here of the Valkyrie. Yeah, and then I will see how many I have, how many observation I have. Four hundred one. They still not. I think I think Germany has more gemeint. Oh, Germany's data is the one from the website should be downloaded. Yeah, the one from website. I put the set in the in the link, so it should be downloaded from this website. Mauricio has asked this question, guys. We may be a bit more than what is planned, but uh, uh, be tolerant to this issue. Uh, we need to finalize it. Maybe some twenty minutes more. We need. Um, sorry for that, but you know, it's not as difficult the first uh, experience I have teaching are online. People from all over the world. So, Mauricio, this is the, the link you have to take the data out. So, you go here, look, you go here and you go to downloads and you download it from this last one. Yeah? Yeah. The fascinating website of the Bundesamt for Cartography und Geodesy. So, if you are happy with, uh, oh, we, we're not done with our, our coordinators play. So we plot the coordinate, what we have, it will be fascinating. It's the Germany, but only the municipality centers. Yeah, based on the UTM, you see guys, we have UTM here. We have UTMs here. 
it not look like a Germany. I mean, as a, as a nice map, but if you check, it's actually Germany. So coordinates of the points. And this is what we need for the special mapping, and we are going to do that in the next step. So guys, I have to, to close this uh, fascinating uh, special objects, and uh, I will move to my weight math matrix uh, establishment. So, let me see if I have that also uploaded for you guys. I think I have already uploaded that. Uh, oh, I haven't uploaded that. That's that's not good. Uh, it's not for too much. So, I think we have all elements for for this. So, quotes and example for so special weight matrix. Okay, so uh, guys, I upload two files uh, to what what I will call uh, example for STEP. Yeah, so uploaded two quote files will be uploaded now. So, two codes are uploaded to a special econometrics with R pack uh, uh, in, uh, in Google Drive. Yeah? Two codes. We need first a special weight matrix R. You can put these two files, yeah? You can put these two files to your exercise uh, folder in the yeah here you can put it here and then you have you should have two weight matrix there so we open the first one in r not here in r everybody has it so everybody managed to access these two set of codes i uploaded now yannick do you have the codes Okay, we go to SDEP, so to the path we have. So, you know what we will use now? We will use the path to those data on the provinces and counties in Iran, the first step. So, make sure that you have the, the packages in, uh, uh, so somehow packages there. So, we have this package, uh, just killing the, killing the, the, the console, that you can be sure that there is nothing to disturb you so now we go to the uh, most fascinating part of this lecture so we are going to establish that weight matrix we have discussed you know weight matrix we have discussed so pat to the provinces uploaded guys again pat to the provinces you have to be sure that this path is the path that you have we had it in the exercise before you remember the exercise before where we were dealing with the Iran maps. The codes are, should be with you there. So use the same. So we run it. And then we take the shape files. We make sure that we have the shape files. Yes. We check the data, what is in. Yeah. You see, this cannot read the, in the shape file, there are some Persian names that this uh, R has need to do some, some stuff should be done that the Persian language to be used in. Uh, I've not then done that because, uh, but there is possibilities, but not so easy, I have to say. So, shape file is uploaded, yeah? Coordinate will be extracted. And now comes the fascinating part. You need to have the SDEP package installed i have defined a codes here if you say column car nearest point yeah car nearest point we put it on three nearest point everybody put it car nearest point coordinates go in coordinates of, of the shape file extracted go in based on the utm 
and then latitude longitude we don't use if you use it then if you have a latitude longitude and if you use it the system should be able to convert it to the UTM yeah I just said if you say it if you say the coordinates is latitude longitude the system should be able to read it sometimes not but normally it should so con nearest point I have decided on the tree I just check it so what did it give me what is produced what is produced is a sort of matrix it says for example each point who are its uh, nearest points so if we have an ID for each point Look, ID for each point. ID for each point. Then it says who is its neighbor. Yeah. So. Again, we just make it sure that we have it. And now I assign also uh, an ID to it. An ID because I need this ID later. I, I assign an ID to it. So 51 regions I have. Now I define who is who so as i said in the in the presentation uh, i just go back to i just go back uh, uh, to my presentation i just he told you here we move from a special object to neighboring list from neighboring this to special weight yeah that's what i'm doing now i move to special weight the special first uh, uh, neighboring so it is defined like that so I put it here I want to see what comes out yeah it said it's a, it is a uh, we have somehow 54 point and we have 153 lengths of the relation between these things so now I plot it what will come Ah, what is that? Can anybody tell me what is this? I'm waiting. Mauricio, what is this? Can anybody say what is this? Nobody can say what is this. This is our uh, a special weight ma uh, uh, uh. No problem. Think on this. Think on this. What is this? Uh, these things, Yannick. Hmm? Correct. It is a neighborhood. Neighborhood. No, 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 no. It is not. Uh, 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 we are not uh, still. We are not there. We are not at the stage to say, oh, we have a, a, a especially uh, a special lagged regressor. No. We are at that point that we have for England. So I just go back a bit. We are at this point. Uh, we're at this point. We say who is neighbor to who. Yeah. So by three nearest point, I have defined who is neighbor to who. And I don't have an island. I don't have an island. So everything somehow is connected. So what happens if I put it to the four? I will put this to four. Yeah. I will check the special weight matrix. Uh, I mean, a special neighboring first. The weight is not there yet. We need to, to work on it. You see, it becomes more. If I just add more points, it goes up. If go up to 10, I think 10 nearest points are affecting each other. The, the plot looks like a more nasty. Yeah, nice, yeah? So did you guys understand the meaning of the neighborhood in the special... Uh, a special way so we have now center of provinces in iran and we think its center is affected by four nearest points or ten nearest points 
Yeah, I put it to 20 nearest points. So 20 nearest points, look what comes up. That is the subjectivity I discussed at the beginning of lecture. Yeah. I leave it to you guys to go and test it for Germany and those data we have for the municipalities. So, this was the Kanye response. Now we need to establish our weight matrix. We're not over yet. Yeah. No, we can see it as a, a graphical visualization of the neighborhood. Weight matrix is different. It's some values, and we are going to see that soon. Yeah? We will see the weight matrix soon. So, if you remember, if you see, I have defined the nearest points with this call weight. Yeah? Call weight here. And then, uh, I have checked that, and now with the NB lists, yeah, I go to find the weights. This is the weight. This is the way I have defined the weights. Let me see where I can extract that for you. So here I have. Uh, Again, I need to, to revise if I don't say any, any wrong thing. So with car to, uh, car to neighborhood, I have extracted, I have defined the neighbors. And then from that point, I have gone and with NB lists, I have defined the level of the weights. Let me see if I am not making class weights. The list style weight. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm right here. I have I have defined the the weights. Yeah. So NB lists gives me the weight matrix. And let me let me make it with the with the smaller numbers and maybe I not lose any any point of the of the of the time. So we just start with four. We plot it and then we define the the weights on this stage. Yes, so with less numbers, I think it's easier to see. And now we go to extract the, the weight as a, as a matrix to see. So this is the D nearest point. There it comes. So. There it comes. List will go to be a matrix. <laughs> Something has gone wrong. Maybe I should have gone with the call weights. Yeah. Let's 
see something is not running with the Kanye response I don't know what so we just uh, test it with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the distance so maybe something has gone wrong in the in in the code so Kanye response I change it to Dini response yeah and I define it like here so here I said those who are certain diameter away from each point they should be in the neighborhood and I reduce it a bit no because that's uh, so heavy oh you see I reduce it to 19,000 meter and it was uh, doesn't show any neighborhood so it should be more let's see let's see to, let's play a bit with this we define now the nearest point we'll see who is uh, how much we have to go to look in in the special econometrics we say we have an island here so we cannot connect based on the d nearest points i mean distance from the certain distance from each point up to like uh, 200,000 meter yeah so 200 kilometer is not enough so we have to go up we have to go to for this case the iranian center of provinces we need to go upper yeah so now we don't have an island we have that here is the that uh, one of the objective area come on the selection of the weight matrix we can define the neighborhood based on the uh, somehow try and error so try and error i just define this this numbers i'm changing is a meter don't forget it is a meter and i'm change, checking that i want to see if i will i saw a, an island here look guys i saw an island so one point is out so 35 uh, 350,000 meter is not enough so maybe 380,000 meter uh, Yannick need to go Yannick I think uh, we need uh, uh, 10 minutes more is that okay Okay, so from this uh, weight matrix we made, we take the list and then through what is called N to B list, so neighborhood to, to weight, yeah? From there, we can define the weight matrix. But I don't know why. Ah, empty neighborhood sets. It said uh, this is not good, so we do it again. And we define the weight matrix. So this should be our weight matrix. Yes, now we have the weight matrix, yeah? So weight matrix is made and you can define it even as an object and if you write this object here you have that look guys this is the weight matrix so each point to each point exactly as we have done it before yeah there are something decimal values based on I don't know what is wrong what has gone wrong with the Kanye's point here but uh, I have to find it. I will explain it next session when, it, when I found that. So we have 51 points and we know who has how much weight on which point in the weight matrix. And this weight matrix is what we will use in the regression analysis. So this is the weight matrix. We have managed to establish one. We have managed to to visualize the, the neighborhood and then now we go and to do a, a final regression yeah so Yannick is going and I think we need 10 more minutes to have a, a sort of prepared uh, uh, test so I empty this part so in order to be fast I just use one of the available codes uh, in internet 
and it is already uploaded for you guys you can go and open the script open this one yeah and you can see it uh, uh, i have selected an, an already internet available example so those who cannot run they can check one by one with me the source is here i put it uh, in the website in the chat those who cannot they just uh, they can uh, start from there yeah so this is it and uh, you can see what i'm going to do in the next uh, steps yeah this is the same i will do the same steps one by one because yeah, we don't have a time so that's uh, why we cannot go deep to some other uh, works so what we will do as you remember we will uh, extract a, a shape file here i have the codes uploaded for you it said opening a shape file warning uh, foreclosures oh Uh oh so first run the codes and now we do it again oh man something has gone wrong here Mm, let me see, let me see why. Codes data with example one. Yeah. So it's for some reason it cannot read this uh, file let's check the website why it has happened so so we do it as uh, they have explained so in order to solve this problem so we download the file this is the shape file we download the shape file here yeah we download the shape file so guys uh, put this shape file beside uh, beside your uh, codes download this shape file put it beside your codes beside this one yeah so we have it here yeah and then the others also not only this you need to download all 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 the files so all the files need to be downloaded to be there beside each other are needed good so we have all the files together yeah so now we put the path as as we have uh, as we have it so the path should be this yeah the whole files should be together and we test it if this time it will work oh i have also a wrong path here i put the, the correct path so the correct path guys select the correct, correct path and uh, This should be this should be what what you guys need so this should be the path all the slashes should be forward the slash yes like this this is our path so we have the path and i think we should be able to to run it so i run it again here Uh, something is wrong with my my 
things there. Yes. Yes, no. And now I check it. Oh, we need to, to read it like that. We need to read it. So I put it like this, like this. So here we have that in the quotation. This is closed. And now we run it and now we have it. Yeah, we have it. So we can check the class and we can plot it again. If you remember, so we can plot it. What's that is a part of Chicago. Yeah. Did anybody manage to have this file? Did anybody manage to have this file? Yannick, do you have this? Oh, Yannick's all crashed. So that's so bad. Okay. Okay, so you can, you can, uh, guys, you can keep, keep it, keep it up here on the website and also follow me. You can do all this stuff together. You saw how I have managed it. So what we will do, this is the, the things we have in this data. We have a bunch of data here, not only those geographical data, some additional data. And we will now, um, um, Okay, then, then, then just check. So we have the plot and we have seen the, the, the data. These are data on some housing in Chicago. So we can somehow use some uh, possibilities from the, from the R and we can uh, make uh, some sort of mapping there. So we can, we can go and watch the map data we have on the shape file in our browser, yeah, with the leaf gen. So it's not my job. It's not our, our things here. The mo we have more important things to do. So what we have to do, we have to extract the, the coordinates and establish our weight matrix, yeah. So from the data which is in this uh, in this uh, shape file, in this shape file, yeah. We extract uh, two variables and we run one regression on it. This is the oh, one regression on it. So you guys have the code and you have uh, the things you can just, is a normal, uh, simple regression. Yeah. One variable is, is significant, 30% uh, almost uh, R squared. Now we use, you know, remember we use, we were working with the coordinates points. Now we work with the poly 2 and B. So from directly from the polygons, we extract the coordinates and we turn it to a weight matrix. If you remember, we have done it for the provinces before. Now we do it for the polygons. So we, W, you see, W is the weight matrix extracted from, from that. If we put W here, look. Uh, if we print W, I think we take the print. Oh, I forget what we should do to, to see. So we check the the weight matrix. Look the same. So now we have another neighborhood. Yeah. This is defined a bit differently. This is defined, defined a bit differently that what we had, uh, that we, this is defined based on the neighborhood of the polygons. So if polygons were neighbor, then it is considered as a, as a weight matrix, as a neighborhood. So neighborhood is defined, weight is defined, and coordinate uh, can be extracted. Again, D nearest point, yeah. Here, D nearest point can be another uh, criteria for selection of the, of the weight matrix. Look. We have the weight matrix here. And now we go for the Moran I test. So we select the errors of the of model. So we can put the model uh, regression directly to the Moran I test and we run it. Yeah. Oh, oh, the errors are the errors are showing some level of the especially correlation. Yes, 
very bad. So you can test it when you are doing the, the exercise. You can test uh, with the uh, Lagrange multiplier test, yeah, that which model is okay. But as I said, we need here for this case, for the exercise you are doing, guys, we need two models, a special error and a special lag. So there are other stuff here, but you can see a special error, a special lag. You can compare them and you can, you should be able to select for the exercise. I prefer. So it says uh, that uh, we can run now the uh, special lag model. Yeah. With the black maximum likelihood uh, estimation. So we'll to check the, the violence in this region. And rho, you remember, rho is significant. Special, a special error. Uh, it's, sometimes these softwares, you know, they just um, change it. Here is a special lag and then it, they use rho. Sometimes they use lambda. It's like a really really like uh, it's on, on my nerve so here is a special lag and they use rho so means the special lag is significant as you see yeah so that's it you can run the two sls as i said to estimate that for special lag one again the rho is changed a bit for 40 now is six so you can do some plotting let's believe the plotting now so as i said impact yeah impact you can analyze the uh, the coefficients and you say what is the effect of that yeah so directs and indirects on the coefficients variables that we had here yeah you cannot interpret that directly you need to estimate an impact for that so impact came there Yeah, Yannick, uh, thank you very much for being there. It's actually is over, so you know where to do it uh, yourself. And I will talk with Katrin about the exercises. So I just run the error terms also. One uh, maximum likelihood. Yes, error term, and we have the lambda. You see, lambda is also significant. So it's a model that the lambda and the the, uh, the error term of the special autoregression model is both significant. So we have to decide which one is our model. So that can be selected by a decision made. So I know that everybody is very tired and I'm sorry that at the end we end up in some hurriness. I will revise these code issues of the models uh, next week again, but you guys uh, need to use especially this file, the last one, especially uh, establish your weight matrix and uh, do the exercises. If there is any question, uh, just uh, ask me now.